All right, all right, all right. All praises be to the Most High, the Almighty. Ahaya Bahashim Yashaya Wurwa. That's right. Happy, blessed tabernacle, brothers and sisters, tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles. We are in the midst of the tabernacle. I mean, I've just left the brothers and sisters at camp. Man, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about how many are called, but few are chosen. One thing I realized, and one thing I was talking to the lawyer and the elders about, is that, man, you can't help but be grateful once the Most High has you or has one under a humble setting where the heavens are your roof, right? Mm. And the elements and the grass is your floor. This tabernacle showed me something being amongst the brothers and sisters, how humble and gracious and grateful a nation can be. Jews and also the Gentiles. A matter of fact, what I'm wearing today that says Lion of Judah was made by a quote unquote, if we knew exactly his genealogy, a Gentile. Okay, thank you, Brother Micah. Happy, man, this whole week has been humbling for me. Since I left Friday morning, since we all left, and to hear Sister Shirley give that praise on Tabernacle. Yes, sir. But there's a song I want to play that quantify and embodies the spirit of the Almighty as far as the, the appreciation for his son, Christ, Yeshia, dying on the cross for our sins. A brother, Steve, um, from the uh, uh, VA body, the Virginia body, has a song called In This Place. <laughs> we were all, Elder Lawyer, in the tabernacles, in that place. Mm. That we could reflect away from our homes, away from our comfortable abodes. Right? And guess what? Everyone had tents. I got a little RV. I mean, whatever the case is, it was still a humbling situation not having home. <laughs> right? But anyway. Let's go. Let's go. Listen to this song, brothers and sisters. We just want to give you thanks right now for all that you've done as we open our minds and our hearts and give you praise. Such a son. Here in this place, we marvel at you. He was persecuted. We humble ourselves in your grace. We just want to give you love. Here in this place, bearing your fruit. We seek your face. Here in this place, we won't forget what you did on that cross. Right now, we're just gonna open our hearts and our minds. Here in this place, we give you praise. Our praises were hired by Yeshua, Yeshua, and Rubble Waka Dodge, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here in this place, we marvel at your glory. We humble ourselves in your grace. Pray that 
your heart's convicted Cause some will abort the mission We will endure, we will enjoy as we walk in this truth right. And it's like this We will walk in this love In this righteousness Bearing his fruit To the end of days Reflect all my brother Steve. I'm singing your song. <laughs> Praise to the Almighty. And yes, we have more music during this broadcast with Bishop Amoff's new project called Energy. So halfway through it, of course, we're going to let you hear some of that energy and how to actually support the work and the music the Most High has blessed the body with. Brother Steve from the VA Body, Guess what? I know the Most High sent you that song. I know what it is doing music. These songs come from somewhere. They come from beyond us. One day we, one day there's, there's no song. The next day we're praising in this place. Here on Tabernacle. Let me put that link in there so if y'all would like to, uh, if y'all would like to uh, hear that. I mean, it's deep because there's a lot of music out there. Uh, WAP and all this other crap that people are talking about. But I, I, it so happened I went to YouTube to hear this song that the brother sung from our body. He's baptized in the church, Brother Steve, an elder lawyer. For something like that, it's only 215 views. Hmm. So. <laughs> 215 views. And I'm like, boy, the Most High gets no praise in this earth and you know he has the most high's name in it ahia ahia and sometimes let me tell you especially with young people young brothers and sisters i'm hesitant sometimes to push some music and i'm going to tell you why and i'm going to go into the lesson because i understand to certain degrees and actually dealing in the music growing up in it how if you're not grounded, the spirit of vanity can take root. And you'll begin to forget who blessed you with the talent, who gave you the spirit of song. You'll begin to believe that it's about you and not praising the Almighty. Let me tell you, the angels sing before the Most High each morning in total gracious and gratitude for their being. Mm. There was no greater talent than Lucifer himself. The taverns and songs and harps 
Lucifer was the greatest musician in heaven among the stones of fire, among the sons of God before earth was made. So I understand that just like that same spirit of vanity, can, that, that, that pride that seeped up in Lucifer, when someone has that musical talent, if they're not careful, it can lead them and it, it, can, lead, it can lead you easily astray like Lucifer. And that's the only hesitance I have because there's so much good music. But I'm hesitant in pushing some of these young brothers after what I've seen where brothers did get, you know, some level of, of, of glory. And, and uh, I'm hesitant because I don't want to use the platform that we use strictly for the word to promote the most high, to give someone a level of credibility and, 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 and hope with us towards the kingdom only for something else to happen on top of us, you know, really promoting it. But I've, I've seen the brother before. I never sat with the brother that I heard today, but I mean, I had, when I, when I heard the song, everything stopped. When I heard this song, brother AC played this song for me and it doesn't matter what you were thinking, what you were feeling, who was in the car, Everyone had to stop and listen. And, and, and a power like that can only come from on high. So, brother, I haven't met you yet. But the most I've given you a, a immense talent. Please. <laughs> Stand firm in the word and continue and endure until the end. Okay. I had to play it after hearing it yesterday. Okay. I mean, it moved me. Because I was in a place amongst the body <laughs> at the tabernacle and seeing the humility of Israel, of God's people, in preparation for what's to come. Because soon our comfortability will be taken away. And I see men, women, children, babies, even pregnant women, everyone adjusting themselves in a humble spirit before the Almighty during this tabernacles with with their comfortable abodes miles away. It doesn't matter how they hair look. It doesn't matter how what clothes they have. They sitting there chopping wood. The children are playing. People are playing basketball in between. They're coming together, praying together. You hear the ram's horn early in the morning. Sisters are in a circle praying together, talking about how they can do better for the Almighty. To be not only just good sisters, but better wives. Brothers are coming together, discussing certain scenarios. Revelation in the midst of it is, is, is actually, you know, being revealed. Man, this tabernacles is something else. But out of nowhere, right before I left, because I had to set up for the broadcast for you all. AC asks, Elder, what should we title this particular broadcast this evening? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not thinking about it right now. And out of nowhere, the spirit came and said, this is what you tell her. The thought came to me in an instant. Many are called, but few are chosen. Hmm. Many are called, brothers and sisters. The Most High have awakened. Guess what? This truth is resonating. For, for, for those who are not actually following the truth, they have heard of the Almighty. They have heard of his law. They have been warned. Many have called and walked in, in this truth, in this ministry, and have turned back. Let me tell you, many are called, but few are chosen. And I've seen many that were called today. Since Friday morning, I've seen many sacrifice their comfortable settings to go humbly before the Almighty in this tabernacle, camp out. Uh, I mean, I've seen someone frying chicken, folks. Hmm. Hmm. Frying chicken using chopped wood that they chopped themselves. <laughs> and I'm looking at this and I'm like... 
And I, I look amongst the camp and I've seen young men putting up tents from the city who have never experienced the wild before, never experienced being out knowing what it takes to camp and how to live off the land. Young men. And something came to mind, other lawyer. These are leaders. Paul made tents. And our brothers and sisters, let me tell you, in a total humble spirit, are amongst the body praising the Most High for life. And what it came down to is, and I had to ask this question with many a call, few are chosen. Are we as a people or as an individual, are we grateful? Are we grateful for, for just what Christ did for us? Are we grateful for, for life? Are we grateful for our families, for our children, for, for, the, for the least of what the Most High has given us? Do we appreciate that enough? Or is it not enough? And I wanted to talk about that today. I want to talk about that. And before I ask you, amongst the, even though, you know, you know your baby got got had teeth and so he had you mm. had to leave early mm. but i want to ask you what what this experience did for you just being out there even for the small time you were there and i want you to answer that uh but before you answer that yes, I, one thing yeah. i wanted to pop i wanted to say and get out of my mind while it's there mm -hmm. because it falls in line with this broadcast and the scriptures we're going to bring forth today and hit the like button so that others can hear it, what, what we have to uh, bring forth tonight please Before we left, there was some there were some people in a circle and they asked a question. If there's one thing, if there's some advice that I would leave them with one thing, one tidbit of advice when it comes to building yourself in this work, what would that be? As far as Staying focused towards the end to make it through because there's so many things coming at us. The cares of this world, the expectations of others, the bills, temptation, fear, confusion. So, man, I'm, I'm thinking to, in my mind, I'm like, that's a tough question to answer you know, with just, you know, one answer. When it comes to self-examination, what, what would be the one tip, Elder, you would give us when it comes to um, examining ourselves? What would that be? And I was put on the spot. But, you know, being quick on my feet, I <laughs> I'm like, boy, first of all, you put us on a spot there. But you know what? My thing was, and this is, this is why I think it led to this title we have here. Many are called, but few are chosen. And under, I wrote this under blog talk here, because blog talk will be open in a couple of minutes. Are we grateful? I had that under blog talk. Are we grateful? Because when I answered the question, this is how I answered. When it comes to serving the most high, you, we can't serve two masters. So in a nutshell, never do anything based on someone else's expectations for you. OK. You must. And this is what guess what? What I'm about to drop is possible for everyone. It's not impossible. OK. Number one is we can only deal with the most highs and fulfill what the most high expects of us. When we try to fulfill what others, others expect from us, you'll always come up short. It'll never be good enough. Mm hmm. 
You'll find yourself, we find ourselves chasing a ghost, chasing, 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 you know, looking for fulfillment based on someone else's expectations. I'm like, guess what? The world is ungrateful. If you measure yourself to the world, you'll always come up short. Hmm. Because no matter what you do, it'll never be right in others' eyes. But the Most High isn't like that with us. He'll accept us, okay? The only thing we have to do is our ex... He gave us the laws. He gave us what he expects of us, man and woman. And guess what? What he expects is, is way simpler. And it's an easier life than trying to keep up with the world, than looking to keep up with the world. So my answer to that was, never work towards anyone's expectations for you. You're good enough. You just have to fulfill the most high's expectations of you. Because nine times out of 10, the person you're trying to get acceptance from, what you see on the outside is really a facade. They're not fulfilled. Okay. So they have put up a facade to cover the void. And the void that's missing is the most high. And you're chasing that facade. When that person, when they go in the house that, you, that, that you're trying to look to, uh, for acceptance to, that person isn't happy. That person is not fulfilled. Never, never, never go on a mission to fulfill someone else's expectations of you. You'll fall short every time. The Most High has his expectations. And if that's not good enough for everyone else, so be it. Aren't you tired of, 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 of running this, this race, this rat race? So when I seen that amongst the body, Elder Lawyer, segue into you you getting this and tell me what it's done for you. Yes, sir. When I went to run amongst the body and I seen our brothers and sisters out there, one sister had a full teddy bear suit on, a whole coat on. She mm. didn't care what, she didn't care about how she looked or what people were going to think. She was warm. And I'm like, you mm. know what? That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she had a full, she, she had a onesie on. Mm. <laughs> and her and her daughter, they were both comfortable. And I'm sitting there laughing. I'm like, you know what? Look at them. They don't care what no one think about them or whatever. They're warm. They're comfortable. They're before the Almighty. They're drinking their tea together. And I'm like, where can you find this at? I, I learned so much just through observation. And just to be a part, I'm humbled just to be a part of this work. Elder Lawyer? Yes, sir. Absolutely. Um. Like you mentioned, I was there for a, a brief moment of time. I had to leave early. You know, the, the, the boy was going through a few things, so yeah, I had to leave a bit early. But nonetheless, in the, the short time that I was there, um, it, it brings to mind the scripture where it says, with, what is it? What does it say? Food, shelter, and raiment? Or does it say with uh, food and raiment? Be yeah. there with content? Yeah. And it shows you that the things that we, we have outside of that, first and foremost, is extra, but... Those things which we have on an everyday basis, which we do, we have to be honest with ourselves. Sometimes we do take those things for granted. Uh, being able to use the bathroom or have running water, uh, have a toilet that you can use when you want to, uh, to have a place, a refrigerator to put your food in and, and put things in so that your food don't spoil. Yeah. We take those things for granted. Yeah. <laughs> um, light. Think about at nighttime <laughs> just operating out there. You can't see. In your home, you kind of take for granted that you can just go and switch a light switch on and you have light throughout the house to operate. Out in the, you know, in the, in the campgrounds, there is no access to light like that. Yeah. So these are just small things that we are able to do on a daily basis that we don't necessarily consider that what happens when we no longer have these things on a daily basis to operate with. Yeah. Or to function with. 
Yeah. And it makes you think more so about those who are without and have to survive, the homeless, those who are on the streets, um, you know, those who don't have that warm bed to go to at night, who can't flip that switch on to, to turn on the heat when it's, when it's cold or uh, turn on the air when it's hot. You consider all of those things in a brief moment of time that you're out there in the, you know, in those elements. So that's yeah. Those are those are some of the things I, I really learned and took to heart during that that period of time. Yeah. So let's go into it. Many are called. Many are called. But the few are chosen. The question is, what are we working on to make sure we're the few? Right. Because you have to realize. Like, for instance, Elder Loy and I, we're teachers, right? And we have other elders and deacons. I mean, I mean, we have um, many elders and deacons. I mean, even Bishop Azan, he sent me pictures of an area in Texas and in, in, in Dallas where they allow him to camp and they was blowing up a big pool for baptisms for the newly mm. baptized mm. at the same time camping out not too far from the church. And I'm looking at this all over the earth and I'm brothers and sisters, it's humbling. And, and you have to realize because I understand people look at us and, 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 and say, well, okay, what, our strength is drawn or, or, or is fulfilled to some level, right? Well, I'm energized through the strength the elders bring forth, right? It's confirmation sometimes with a lot of you and all that. But keep in mind, brothers and sisters, we're only here to plant this, the seed. And I think some people may get upset with us or feel a certain type of way when we don't fulfill their expectations mm. of us. Hmm. Very true. And I need y'all to understand that. I must endure into the end. So if I'm planting seeds and that's my position, of course, I'm going to fall short in everyone else's expectation. But that's what the body is about. The body is supposed to look at what's missing and add so that it's not taken away from others receiving like you received. What I do and what Elder does and what you see us doing is our ministry in the body. And anything that will pull us from making it into the end, we have to abstain from. We have to understand when it's too much weight, when we're being pulled backward to a degree in which you know, our making it can actually be in question. Hmm. So I need y'all to understand that. I wanted to be able to quantify that so y'all can understand. When we plant that seed and begin to water that seed, each week when we teach and encourage and we in the academy and we encourage dropping knowledge, we're forever watering that seed. But in order for that seed to, to grow to a degree in which you're rooted, that's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to make sure that that seed is nurtured and is rooted so that if something come up, tr because troubles will come, offenses will come, all that will come, that you are actually rooted enough in Christ to understand to a degree in which it will not deter you from the prize. That no matter what goes down, it's not going to turn you around and it's not going to have you turn your back on the original mission. That's your responsibility. That's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing because the prize is evident. It's before us, brothers and sisters. Many are called, few are chosen. And you have to realize, and we're going to go into these scriptures because it's important that you understand what you're responsible for. And when you take up that responsibility, it strengthens the, the whole. Right? 
Let's go, Elder Lawyer. Yes, a sir. few things I want to drop, and then we're going to open up the calls. Let's go. Yes, sir. Let's go to the, the seeds real quick. Yes, sir. Uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse number one. Read. The same day went Yeshaya out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him. So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. So now, Christ sowed these seeds. Now these seeds, folks, is the truth. Now he understand that even though this truth applies to all, each individual isn't going to treat that seed and protect that seed and water that seed. He understands this, but yet the truth was given to all equally. The same knowledge that was dropped on me to have me understand that I'm an Israelite and that Christ died on the cross for my sins and that, and that I'm a prisoner to this mission. It's the same message that have been dropped on you. It's the same mes message that was dropped on a seven day Adventist or a Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah Witness that's amongst the body or an Egyptologist. Guess what, folks? It's not my seed. It's not elder lawyer seed. It's Christ's seed. Mm -hmm. And it's what you do with it. Now, what you witness a person do in the works, show forth what they're doing with the seed. Are they growing or are they chopping down? Are they gathering or are they scattering? See, you shall know them by their works, by their fruits. Are they bringing life or are they bringing vengeance, vitriol, hatred, jealousy, envy? You shall know them by their fruit because the fruits of the spirit is, are evident. <laughs> okay. The fruits of the spirit are, are evident. It doesn't matter whether or not you are a seven-day Adventist, you're in a conscious community. It doesn't matter if you are from the fruit of Islam. It doesn't matter if you are a Muslim, seven-day Adventist. It doesn't matter if you are a holy rolling Baptist Christian. The truth is relative. The truth is the truth. And everyone along all these different lives, coming out of all these different lives, has heard it. You've heard it. But what you do, what did you do with it? Finish reading, other lawyer. Matthew chapter 13, verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Okay, they said something is wrong with the sound. Let me make sure. Okay, they say the sound's good. Let me ask um, uh, Elder Dell, is the sound okay? Yes. I want to make sure because I want to make sure this comes through just with, with, with no issue. I'm sure it's okay. Okay, they say the sound's fine. Read that part again, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. St. Matthew chapter 13, verse 4. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell by the wayside. Why? Because no one did anything with it. So the, the fowls came and took the seed. Read. Verse 5. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. Because they have no deepness of earth. Read. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had not root, 
they withered away. So if it's not rooted, when, when it's rooted, folks, when those roots start growing and the water gets to those roots, which is the living power of the Almighty, you begin to grow and you're rooted. And guess what? Just like a tree, them barks get rooted in the ground and stop. No matter what happens, offenses, whatever they have, you are standing. You are rooted. And see, I thank the Most High that he gave us the spirit of perseverance and are rooted. Because when I examine the alternatives outside of what I understand and what's coming and, and the kingdom to come and the judge who's coming, I realize there's no other options. There is no options for me. This is it. What I'm going to do. What, I'm going to leave all this knowledge and truth and understanding and, of, of God's law and join the Christian church? What am, what am I going to do? Forget everything I've learned and become a pagan? What am I going to do? Forget Christ's blood shed on Calvary for the sins of our nation and become an Egyptologist? The reality of the fact of the matter, brothers and sisters, is there is no options. I don't care how much we try to run from it. If this isn't if this isn't the truth. And what Christ provided in this word and his baptism, the revelation of the most High's name, baptizing in the true name of the almighty, get get in direction from the heavens to serve him on the days of appointed according to what happened even before the flood, I realize, where else can I go? What else could I teach? Why? Because I'm rooted. Guess what? I'm two feet in. I'm digged in like, like a tree planted by the water. And I don't care what comes at me, who say what. Guess what? I'm standing. I could care less. A matter of fact, I would feel something is wrong if you're not talking against it. And I'm going to go there, too. I would feel something wrong if there was an adversity. We must stay rooted in this hour of temptation. Let's let's break down these seeds. Let's go. Yes, sir. Jumping down to verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not. That means someone, un let me tell you folks, you have someone who can't refute truth. Like I said earlier, truth is relative. There's no such thing as my truth. Truth is truth no matter who hears it. Two plus two will always mean will always add up to four. That's the truth. <laughs> I don't care how many people try to look at it sideways. Well, suppose one is held over there and the other one is over there. There's really one, but you put it together. But two and two equals what? Four. Truth is relative. And that's what Christ is. See? So you will hear that truth and you will have people who will know what there's what you can prove what you're teaching is correct. And, you, and because of someone's life and their circumstances and realizing exactly what they need to give up. They'll deny it. They'll deny what they know is true because what? It's against their aspirations for this life. It's getting in the way of everything they planned for their life. And right, right there in and in, in of itself lets you know that they know the truth because they're weighing it. They're saying, well, look at this. That means I must walk in the unknown. I've done everything to create the life I have for me and my children. And if what these people or what Christ or what this Bible is saying is true, that means I have to change my whole life and start from the beginning. And I simply don't want to. I simply don't want to. It's getting in the way of my happiness. 
So you heard the truth. You must have heard it if you heard enough to deny it. You weighed it with, because usually when you hear about a religion or a belief, you go in with questions, the tenets. And the questions is, will I be able to live the same life I'm living and still follow that respective religion? Hmm. So you start asking questions. The truth comes, that's that seed, and now you know a choice must be made. The difference between the chosen, the chosen heard the word. They received that seed and and was grateful for it and was willing to die to receive it. That means to reject this life, to receive Christ's life. That means a person in the truth is no different than a brother or sister who heard it for the first time, yet denied it. That's what it means to be chosen. Because you made the right choice. So that that seed is there. It's it's right there in front of you. But I'm going to tell you, the, the burden, there's a burden that comes with this. There's a burden. And most people see it and deny it. They'll look at it and say, well, hold up. There's only one time a year I feel appreciation for family. When I'm getting together with my husband or the wife getting together with his wife, finding out all year what the children want for Christmas and Buying the stockings, the one time where your child is off, you know, from college or school when the family's together and you get those stockings next to the fireplace and here it is, you know what your wife won and you, you want to give us a surprise for Christmas and you're wrapping those gifts, all those traditional things that happens that really brings family together this time of year. And you're looking at that saying, well, listen, it's only one time a year my family feels like this. And you mean to tell me I have to give it up? We're all sitting there with the foil paper, the the, the gold paper, the red paper, the ribbons, the children looking at cartoons. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm sure my appreciation working hard over time to make sure my child, you know, don't go without. And you're going to tell me this is wrong. Mm-hmm. I'd rather not receive that seed. You will go to Jeremiah, the 10th chapter, show them the tree, show them that the most high says, don't follow the customs of the heathen for their vain. You will go into Sunday. You will give them the history on Sunday that it was Babylonian, Satan's son, Nimrod, who began Sunday worship while building a tower which was a weapon against the God you claim to serve on Sunday. You will give you the history, give you the information, give you the Bible. And you will say, well, no, it's against my happiness. So guess what? Time and chance happened to all men. Christ gave you the same seed he gave us. The only difference is we decided to do something with it. We didn't decide to weaponize it because we know the truth and become Pharisees and scribes and browbeat the servants and and hurt people. And no. We we actually get bring forth the spirit or the fruits of the spirit and with the fruits of the spirit, deliver the word of God. And you have received this the same way we have received it. When I received my seed, folks, it was on some serious stony ground. I learned the truth of who I was by Pharisees. Pharisees taught me. People who denied the baptism of Christ. But I wasn't going to stop serving Christ with that original seed I received. Just because I received it on stony ground. Because I understand that the most high can use anyone.
to deliver that seed. It's what you do with it. I wasn't going to let what men did or what men do stop me from appreciating or not being grateful for that seed that was sown in me. Or I would believe that that truth was of man. I would begin to be angry at man for not being right and man not doing this and man. No, I'm in appreciation of that seed of truth that came through those men. But I know it was the almighty that sent the seed. And it was upon me to do what's right with it, regardless of those men. So what I wasn't going to do when the Most High gave us a ministry was to set up a ministry to hate the Pharisees. Let me talk about this group and this group and this, this, that, and the other. And this is the group and, and the Gavin Christ Church become the, let me talk about this and let me talk about that group and let me do this. No, we began to teach Christ in baptism to, to do what? To plant that seed for the kingdom of heaven. So the question is, many are chosen. Guess what? Many are called. He called all of Israel. Every person in this earth heard about Israelites. Whether, whether, whether or not you want to accept it or not. You've heard the fact that we're the children of Israel. It doesn't matter what religion. You're under. And it doesn't matter whether or not you are Israelite. Gentiles have heard it. What are you going to do with that seed? Are you grateful? Let's finish reading another lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse number 19, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. So every time someone received the truth, understand evil is present also. Someone is or spirit is looking to discourage you. And we've been disappointed as a people so many times. It's to a degree in which. We cannot even receive the truth unless we think that there, it must be a con game. There must be something. Truth just can't. I'm, I'm not supposed to receive truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm definitely not supposed to get truth from black people. There must be an angle because these people aren't white. Where's the angle? There is no angle. You got the truth, but what, what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? Because Christ said, listen, when someone has a light, they don't put it under a table. They put it on top of the table for all to see. So when that seed have taken root, works are produced from it. Works towards the kingdom of heaven. Righteous works. Works that when someone hear the word and apply it, they are a better person today than they were yesterday. <laughs> even if it's abrasive, even if it's something I don't fully accept, I can't stand what you're saying. But in your heart, you know. What they're saying is right. Even Christ spoke with one that had authority. The authority was truth. That was the authority. Because people, before that, people like to do what? Be politically correct, say things, just to be accepted so that everyone can accept it wholly because it's non-abrasive. Nah, the truth is the truth. And that's what, that, that's what distinguished or severed or separated Christ from the rest. Every time he spoke, it was truth. And that was the authority. But people can't accept truth. So because they couldn't accept truth and he shined a light on darkness because everyone liked to be coddled. People got together and began to conspire and lie on him and tell people that the miracles he's doing is of the devil. It's of Satan. They was able to rally up a mob to a degree in which they would kill the only truth on earth at their time. Why? Because the truth hurts. 
Listen to this clearly here. Listen, listen to these seeds now. Read. Yes, sir. Verse 20. But he that receives seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. So you have a purse immediately receive the word. Read. Yet hath he not root in himself. But he have not root in himself. These are people who can listen to something and say, yeah, that is deep. I do agree. You can agree, but guess what? You have no root in yourself. You haven't watered that seed. You haven't studied. You haven't built on the knowledge that was dropped. So this person stays stagnant in the same place as time passed by. They're getting older, only in age, but not in the wisdom of the Almighty. And they're wondering why they can't produce anything. Because what the Most High gave you, you should be able to move mountains. But it's what you do with the seed. See, listen to what I'm showing you here today, brothers and sisters, during this time of tabernacle. Because what happened is the Most High have this thing moving and people moving. You're looking at and then people will start getting upset. Not because nothing is going wrong, that someone doing something wrong to them, because they see progression while they're stagnated. They're sitting still, and now it's frustrating them. And then they're blaming the they're blaming what's what's already moving. <laughs> when guess what? We're, we're coming closer to the kingdom. And guess what? Even in this work with elders, deacons, with the church, from one holy day to the next, one Sabbath to the next, we're not stopping. This, this train moved a long time ago. And some people may get frustrated because we, we're, we aren't stopping. What have you done with your seed? We should all be moving this quicker. We should all be together. We should be working towards what's to come. See, I, I hope this is not going over your heads what I'm showing you right now. Listen to this. Read. Say Matthew 13, verse 21. When it says what is already moving, the work, the plans towards the kingdom, the preparation. Good question. The preparation. We're going to go into that. Some of you may have missed the lesson we did um, and I'm going to put up a clear copy of it in case y'all, I, I made sure I downloaded a recording on my video, on my computer in case the internet wasn't working right. That's why I had to come to the church to do the broadcast. And we, we broke down the parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins. How the most high through Christ gave everyone the same truth, but five did what was right with that oil and the others wasted time in that oil is a preparation to get from one place to the next to get to the door and what i broke down last uh uh sabbath was hey christ is the porter at the door okay he's the porter at the door we're just planting the seed now, if we're preparing and doing what we have, have to do as a body and you're not, when it all comes down, you can't blame us for only having enough for those who are preparing with us. Because this thing ain't some, some spaceship coming down to take us someplace, folks. Mm -hmm. This is going to take real-time preparation on earth like it did before 70 A.D. And Christ right. used his church to do it back then, and he's going to use his church to do it now, in this time. No spaceship is going to pick people up. Faith without works are dead, folks. Mm. I'll put that out there. And many people will be like, well, yeah, okay, the most out of angels said he's going to, he's going to the angels, he's going to have the angels. What are you talking about the angels? Don't you understand how the angels work? It tell you in 2nd Ezra, the 13th chapter, when the 10 tribes came over the waters, that the Most High held still the waters. Who held still the waters? It was the angels who made sure the waters stayed still 
while the ships sailed on the oceans. Mm -hmm. The angels didn't pick the 10 tribes up and bring them to America. Right. Somebody had to build those ships. Somebody had to build those <laughs> ships. They had to sit there with those cells. They had to make sure they had provisions of food to, for the journey. Mm -hmm. The angels just made sure the water's still and that, th and that there was no creatures that can harm the boat. Mm -hmm. That was the angels guiding the righteous. But faith without works are dead. If you think you're going to get out of what's coming, coming without physical works, you have another thing coming. And not to get off too far into this, uh, yeah. let's say hypothetically, this is a big hypothetical, that ships were coming to pick people up. There's a lot of time in between now and ships coming or Christ returning with ships to take people from one place to the next. Which means in between that time, in the meantime, in between time, you still must do something to be preserved for that time when the, the, the ships come, hypothetically. And on that, hold the seed and let's get Proverbs 27 and 12. Mm-hmm. And then I need you to go back to Matthew. Yes, sir. Proverbs 27, verse number 12. Yes. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. That means you have the understanding of the Almighty. You're prudent. So you see what the wicked is doing in the earth. Like we've been telling you from the beginning, if you think this stuff right now in the earth is about a cold or a virus, you have another thing coming. We say that mm -hmm. from the beginning. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is running right into the mark of the beast. So read it again. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. Foreseeth the evil. And hideth himself. And hideth himself. But the simple pass on but, and are punished. But the simple pass on and are punished. So when people are talking about fleeing, oh, the wicked fleeth when no man pursueth. And all uh, that scripture ain't even talking about that. What about when Christ told the disciples to prophesy to the Israelites that when you see Jerusalem compass with armies, flee into the wilderness? That wasn't them being cowards. So they were following Christ mm -hmm. and preserve their lives alive. And if it wasn't for that. We wouldn't have been here in America because the majority of us fled into Africa, which is the middle passage for the children of Israel. Africa is not our homeland. Africa is part of the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Read that again, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Proverbs 27, verse 12. Come A on. prudent man foreseeth the evil. Foreseeth the evil. And hideth himself. And know what to do. But the simple pass on when and it says, are punished. When it says hideth himself, when you see evil coming, you're prepared. You know where to go. Christ says when you're persecuted in one city, flee into the next. There you go. That's hiding yourself from the evil. You're going to sit there and get ran over? Mm -hmm. And it, gets, it, it always happened like that. The Most High could have easily had it where when Moses was born, have an angel, as soon as she came out, take the angel and, 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 and fly Moses over into Egypt for safety. He could have easily did that, easily. But no. You know what, he, know what happened? They built a moat. They built a little boat. And the angels guided the boat. But guess what? Somebody had to build the boat. Mm -hmm. When Christ was born, Herod had a plan with the magicians. The, the magicians foreseen his star in the heavens, the magis. And they came to him and said, the child is born. He says, well, bring him here so that we can worship him. But the angel warned Joseph. Mm-hmm. The angel warned Joseph and said, take your son into Egypt. Mm -hmm. Herod plans to kill him. That was the angels guiding them. Mm -hmm. But you know what Joseph had to do? He had to get his caravan together with Mary and take his son into Egypt. That's right. Huh? Come on, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Going back to Matthew 13. If I can mention one more thing on that. Uh, yeah. You know, a lot of that, that foolishness, in fact, two things. A lot of that foolishness that people were putting out there, fleeing when no man pursueth, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, 
that stuff sounded good seven, eight years ago when we was first bringing this thing out. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are, you know, you're hearing different things and people are talking about trying to get land and trying to move and do certain things because it's obvious that in order to escape some of what's going on, even though we know it's going to take over the whole earth, we know all of that. But we know in order to be preserved for a time, you're going to have to move from one place to the next. You're going to have to make preparations. Secondly, so, oh, look, before you do that, let me answer this question. Someone asked, and that is a good question. Do Israelites hate white people? As a matter of fact, I'm going to write that down and make that a lesson, right? Yes, sir. Do Israelites do Israelites hate white people? Now, that's a good question. I'm an Israelite. Now I'm going to ask you a question and I'm going to show you. Let me put this without offending you here. I'm going to show you how, and I have to say it, how simple that question is. I, I had to do it. Let me, I'm going to return that question with a question. Do white people hate black people? I'm going to ask you again, because that's how simple that question is. Do white people hate black people? And if you're white, you're going to answer, well, not all white people, right? Mm -hmm. See, what happens is someone bewitched people into believing that being an Israelite is a religion. Mm -hmm. That's right. When Christ was an Israelite, Christ didn't hate white people. The disciples were Israelites. Paul was an Israelite from Benjamin, Romans 11, 11 chapter. He didn't hate white people. Even the Sadducees and, Sadducees and scribes, they got their power in position from Rome. Even the Pharisees didn't hate white people. <laughs> and they were Israelites. So that's a simple question. It's, it's a ridiculous question. Because all white people don't hate black people. Therefore, the educated way of looking at this is understanding that Israel, Israelites are the people of the Bible. And if it wasn't for these people of the Bible, there would not have been an extension for the Gentiles to be saved or to come in under the power of Christ's kingdom being taught by Israelites. So if Israelites hated white people, there would be no white Christians. It was our forefathers that converted white people. Got it? Now, are there people that hate other people, hate other races of people in every race? Absolutely. Are there Israelites that hate white people? Yes. but And they'll tell you that too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> The, the Israelites that hate white people will tell you that. So it's a, it's totally an uneducated question when someone asks, do Israelites hate white people? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. All Israelites aren't the same, just like all white people aren't the same. Okay, now if you, it's, it's whether or not you have, you are willing to take the due diligence to understand that. OK, all Israelites don't believe the same ideology, the same way the Catholic Church don't teach what the Protestant teach. OK, you can have the same race of people, but they vary in doctrine. Well, the same thing with Israelites. We're the Israelites who follow Christ. We convert Gentiles, we accept Gentiles. And I don't care what color they are. They can be white, Chinese, whatever the case is. It doesn't matter their race. As long as they're willing to follow the true living God. Our position, position is to sow seed. That ain't, our, that, ain't, that ain't in us to hate anyone. Hope you understand that. We will baptize you to do what? Yeah, to cover the sins of your, of your evil forefathers. Okay, they were wicked. 
Okay, so the same way we have to cleanse our people of the sins of our forefathers, you as a white man must be cleansed of your forefathers' sins. So no, we don't hate you. We love you enough to show you water and, 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 and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And we're here to let you know there will be a changing of God. Whatever the white man has right now, we'll all, we'll, we'll listen to me clearly. Whatever he have now is all he'll have in power. Christ is coming back to take his power. And it's not because he, there's some hatred here. It's because if Christ, if Christ didn't return and if we didn't bring the light of Christ, if the world didn't change or we didn't sever out through Christ a, a remnant, no one would be left. There will be no black people or white people after Satan does what he, what he plans to do. So you better thank the most high that Christ is coming back. And that there will be a changing of guard. Because guess what? Esau has destroyed everything. If you know who Esau is, Esau is the white man. He destroyed everything. So because of our love and Christ's love, he has sent a ministry that can baptize us as a remnant for the kingdom to come. Hope I answered that for you. Go back to where you are, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Yeah. This is the book of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse number 21. Yet he have no root in himself, but endure for a while. So you have people who would endure for a while. They know the truth. They will endure for a while. Read. It uh, says, for when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. So now what happens? You have people who know the truth. But what happens? For when tribulation or persecution ariseth because of the word. Because of the word. That means they may disagree with something. Read. Mm -hmm. By and by he is offended. And that person become offended. Now, if they look back before the offense and was a look at it, they always receive love amongst the body. They've always been treated with care and love, regardless of their difference in philosophy or where they went and found something else. When they go back to their experiences amongst the body, they'll tell you. Yeah, I, we were all, I was always treated like a brother in Christ amongst them. But by and by, from the word, that means they may disagree with something and not willing to, get to, to make the time to get understanding. Satan to take that one inconsistency, that one area, to put a wedge between brothers. So the person will become offended. Not that you did anything to him. He'll become offended because you're not going to teach what he wants you to teach. But then we have to respond back with, well, hold up, brother. What we taught led you to the water. What we taught led you to view and understand your sins against your God. What we taught you was truth. That's why you asked and was compelled to be a part of the body. We didn't ask you. <laughs> So if it worked for you and compelled you to be amongst the body, why should we change now? Why should we follow a doctrine the Most High saved us from? We're not like dogs going back to our vomit. We're not going back to the Christian church. Would you want us to not follow God's law anymore? No. You know what we're going to do? We're going to continue and life will go on because we were doing it before we knew you. We were brought with a price. And none of us aren't that important. Ye that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. It could have been you asking to go to the water or it could have been someone else. We would have put you in the water. What you did with that seed is on you. 
If it was good enough to where you tracked us down and email and phone and hit us, we didn't go looking for you. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if it was good enough then, what, what changed? We didn't change. We're doing the same thing we did when you asked us to baptize. The change came in you. That seed that we had from the beginning, we're still here with it. And we're not looking backward. So the question is, when one is offended, Christ points out that seed. They begin to do what? Begin to speak against, backbite, harm, put stumbling blocks in front of others. We become their enemies. After doing, we didn't do anything to them. We were, we're teaching now what we taught them <laughs> when they ask us to put them in the water. Mm -hmm. And they have made us their enemy. I need y'all to check that out, folks. And you know what we do? Keep on pushing. That's right. We didn't know you before, and we're going to keep on going. Because what, we, we're going to do what we need to do with this seed. Mm -hmm. We're going to finish. That seed led, led you to a point and we're still, you came here for baptism and we were still moving. The question is, what you going to do with your seed? Mm -hmm. That's the question. Are you grateful that it took work to get to you? To a degree in which you would hear the truth and be convicted and ask to receive repentance through baptism. And we were there to actually put you in the water. Are you grateful for that? Or did you think it was all about you the whole time? <laughs> stop the presses. Everyone stop the presses. I don't see something. So heavens must stop. Prophecy must stop. Everything must stop. I'm so important that every the heavens must stop until I get some understanding. No, you sit right there. Mm -hmm. You sit right there with that seed and see what happens to it. We're moving. Mm -hmm. Finish reading, other lawyer. Yes, sir. Verse thir uh, 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. You hear people. You see people who hear the word. In the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. See that? The care of this world. Because the, guess what, folks? What happens is you've always had aspirations and goals within this world. So what happens? No soon as the Most High reveals the truth to you. An opportunity comes out of nowhere and you don't ask where that opportunity came from. Everything you all of a sudden, the whole life was a struggle up until this point. Now that you're choosing light, choosing truth. All everything you've always aspired to be in the world is presented to you. <laughs> and you don't ask a question like, isn't that convenient? Before Christ's ministry, before his baptism, he was taken up into a high mount and was shown all the glory of the kingdoms of for this world. And Satan said, bow, if you bow down and worship me, you don't have to wait to be king. I'll have you king over all empires. And guess what? Christ rebuked him. Every time that seed is presented, brothers and sisters, some something comes up that you would have never had the opportunity to indulge in beforehand. Say, because Satan is about to lose one. He didn't have to really focus on you because you were in the world. He had you. But no soon as you're choosing a master, he's like, well, no, no. Is that the girl you wanted? Hold up. Is, is that the person you wanted? Is this the job you always wanted? Now opportunity is coming from, from everywhere and you don't realize that there's a what? A tuggle for your soul. Christ came with the seed and Satan is saying, no, 
I'm willing to gift you. I'm willing to do what? Yes, bribe you to stay. You should have seen all the all the offers and all the op, all, everything that was offered to me when I wanted to go out and teach. When I every Saturday I would even no matter what the adversity I was going through I would be out there every Saturday. And here it is, you know I put my resume online, folks. That's when there was this thing you can go online because I had my insurance licenses. I had everything. Folks, you wouldn't believe some of the offers I was getting just just to be tied to a job. And I'm like, hold up. I, I've never I always wanted this position. And now 20 of these positions are open for me. I'm going to go out and teach. I'm going to go out and teach. I'll just sit down afterwards and sit amongst the brothers. And I used to take y'all. We used to go sit. We'll go to a restaurant and we'll eat together and we will break bread and just talk. And you know what? I'm like, you know what? I have, This is what I was made to do. I was made. I was born to do this. And I'm talking about upward six figures, folks. With bonuses and all that. All in my email, I'm getting all these different. These different offers for jobs. Christ tell you about that. Like I'm saying, I'm not talking, brothers and sisters, this experience I'm talking about happens to everyone. Everyone has the same experience because Christ had that experience at the mount. And it happens to all those who've received that first offer, that seed from Christ. So I'm not just talking about me. It happened to you. Everyone, when it's time for you to actually make a choice and say, you know what? And you say it out loud. I know I'm doing wrong. I'm going to do right. Boom. Something else must have been listening because the next day. A distraction happens. Something is before you that you could that would have never been there before because you're you're choosing to you're choosing to serve the living God. Listen to what I'm saying, folks, to you here, folks. Many are called, few are chosen. The question is, because all of us receive that same seed. And I keep on saying that. What y'all looking at Elder Ricard and say, man, Elder Ricard, man, he must be smart. He must be this. He must be this. Listen, you know what it is? I took the seed, and once the Christ gave me the seed, no matter the adversity, whatever I went through, I never stopped. That's the only difference. That's right. The only difference is I'm grateful for the most high showing me who I am and who I was. And I'm grateful for Christ's blood. So, yes, there have been struggles, all that. But I never stop. And that's the only difference. And because of that, the Most High have rewarded me. Ever so often with certain things to show that he's with me to say, well, OK, I like the way you're going. OK, but you have to fix this. You have to fix that. Often the most high say, well, OK, I'll keep on going, no, no matter what they say. You can have naysayers. You can have people try to do things to you. All that. Keep going. And folks, it's just because I'm doing something with the seed. That's all. I'm no different than you. The only difference is every day I do it. And I'm grateful. Above all, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful. Understand that because I don't feel I deserve all, all that. I don't I don't feel that. I feel there's more work to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. And that's what y'all have to understand, folks. Unless I endure to the end, all this work up until this point was for naught. If I don't make it with that seed, what was it for? Everyone have that seed. And that's what you always have to remind yourself of, brothers and sisters, what the Most High gave you. And know that it's enough. It's enough. Finish reading, other lawyer. Yes, sir. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And the deceitfulness of riches. Satan is coming with the bribe now. 
Here it is. You're seeing a girl you could never get. And she's now she's turning back looking at you now. Here's a here's a or, or a person. Or an opportunity. Oh, yeah, man. Out of nowhere, man. I got a job over over in uh over in the Carolinas on VA or in some remote area. I just got a job. I just have to move. And it's the one place where there's no body that you can congregate with. All this opportunity for money, but yet you'll lose the you'll forsaken you will forsake the assembling when there's many people who are just crying for a congregation to be amongst, who are working towards being with a congregation. You will leave a congregation to go into a remote area for money and believe it's the most high. I've seen many people say, yeah, man, I got to get this money, Elder. And when I get it, man, we're going to really get this thing going. I'm, <laughs> the most high just blessed, and I'm looking at it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And, I, and really, I'm prepared to say my last goodbyes because it always happened that way. Mm-hmm. What did Christ tell the rich man? Sell everything you get. Sell everything you have and give it to the poor and come follow me. Do the work. The payment is in the kingdom. There's no job you can have to, to contribute to the work somewhere that if it means your soul. We'd rather have you than your few dollars. We'd rather have you. Satan is trying to separate you from the life source, which is the body. See? Finish reading, other lawyer. It says, But the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. And he becometh unfruitful because what? Chasing money and chasing the cares of this world. What happens? You have less time with the Most High. You have less time now because you're working all day. Satan in this kingdom require all your hours. You just have enough time to kiss whoever you're with and go to sleep to slave the next day. And each day you're losing life. You're losing precious time. And the Satan is like, well, that's good. That's fine. Keep working, my son. 70, 80 hours. Go ahead. Don't don't have time to pray, no time to read, no time to study. That's what we need. Matter of fact, I'm going to have a CEO, an all CNI CEO come sit down with you and give you a little raise, a little bump. See? The cares of this world and the riches choke you to a degree where you're unfruitful to the Almighty. So what do you do with that seed? That seed is choked. It bears no fruit. It dies. This person becomes stagnant. And when they become stagnant, they become indignant. The family begin to speak to him and say, yo, you was in the Bible. You was this. You thought they weren't looking. They start asking you questions. And then you come back and say, well, yeah, you know, I'm over that. That was a phase, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, right. you know what I mean? I'm starting to, I'm, I'm glad I've been separated because now, I, you know, now I'm starting to see something deeper man what you were saying about those those guys and what that i'm starting to see that now mm -hmm. and then you look up guess where you are alone destitute you know it you know no one did anything to you you alone no friends and now you're looking to blame us when it was your choice mm -hmm. to choose whatever we were working. We were, we were still here every Wednesday. We were still here every Sabbath. We were still with the meetings with the deacons. We were still preparing for what's to come and had no idea <laughs> that you would, that, that some individual took another path. <laughs> right? Finish reading. Verse 23. But he that received seed into good ground 
is he that heareth the word. He that what? Heareth the word. This is the one that received it in good ground, brothers and sisters. Read. Is he that heareth the word. You hear the word. And understandeth it. You understand it. Which also beareth fruit. And you begin to bear fruit. And bringeth forth some an hundredfold, some sixty. Some what? Some sixty. Some a hundredfold, some sixty. Read. Some thirty. Some thirty. So... Those who have a seed that's watered is bringing forth fruit. So people can say what they want to say about the gathering of Christ church or you individually or me individually. Guess what? I'm doing exactly what Christ commanded. I'm bringing forth fruit. Okay. Charity cover, covers a multitude of sins. And I'm going to keep bringing forth that fruit in Christ. Say, listen, listen, Christ. Please help me. Let me in. Remember him? He was in the world. Guess what? I helped him. I helped her. Can you let me in? While everyone is out in the world, partying, and do whatever they want to do. Lord, I was bearing fruit for you. I want to get in. So I don't care what no one think. No one say the people can curse me out. They can say, but, but guess what? I'm going to continue to bring forth fruit because that's my ministry. That's our ministry. And we were called to do what? Multiply that seed. And that's why I said earlier when they asked, well, what is the one thing that we can do? Sisters was in the circle and asked, what's the one thing we can do? If, if we was to give you some advice for self self observation. And I said, it. I'm like, listen, the one thing you can do is never set your bar based on someone else's expectations for you. Never, because whatever you do, it's never good enough. Deal with your expectations that the Most High have for you, and you'll be fine. No matter what you do for people trying to deal with their expectations, they're going to always find something you're not doing. And you'll fall short every time. Find out what the most high expects from you and do it. That's it. Doesn't matter what everyone else thinks. Do that and guess what? You'll have peace. You'll have peace because there's no satisfying an insatiable world. You'll find yourself working to do what? To actually Get some type of confirmation from sinners, from evildoers, from those who hate God. And the world put way, way more expectations on you. No, that's what I told them. Especially the sisters. I'm like, sisters, listen. Find out in the Bible what the Most High expect from you and fulfill that. That's it. Because the world will have you chasing your tail. You, you'll, always, you'll, ne you'll always fall short. You'll always fall short chasing the world and in the world's expectations for you. Because what? None of us are good enough. That's why I said it. Because you can, you can do everything. You can, you can work hard. You can do this, that, and the other. And guess what? The same people you're doing it for don't even appreciate it. They won't. <laughs> and now, now what's happening? You becoming bitter. Your faith is being shaken. Lord, I'm doing all this for everybody and look at me. No one looks out for me. No one, you know why? Because you was doing it for them. Mm -hmm. You was trying to meet their expectations without meeting the most ties first. Find out what the most high need from you and you, you focus on that because he, he'll show you. You wouldn't know what real gratitude is because he'll begin to bless you. See? And you know, and I, and I, I keep, let me say from every, from every holy day and all that, and that's why I keep on saying people, people send emails and say, 
this person talk about y'all, this person talk about y'all. And what do I say? I'll be in the car laughing. I say, listen, they should get a get a number and wait in line. Get a number. If you want to talk about what we're doing, that's fine. Get a number and wait in line. Because we must be working if you if there's if there's something out there that you have that makes you talk about it. And you know what it is? That number that's given through that C, that 30, that 60, that 100, the most time must be doing a work big enough for you to talk about. <laughs> okay. So, hey, I, listen, I, I laugh because what, what comes out of your mouth condemns you. What comes out of your mouth is what condemns a man. Mm -hmm. I don't have no control over your mouth. I'm, I'm doing the same work I did before I knew you and will continue to do so. So if you're going to make a video or hate on us or say something again, take a number, put your video out and get in line with the rest of them. Why? Listen to this. Elder lawyer. Yes, sir. Let's go to St. John, the 18th chapter. It's 15, right? Yes, sir. 15 and 18. See? And that's another thing, folks. Once you get that seed and you decide to stand rooted with the Most High, no, be prepared for everything to come against you. Everything and stand. Because if Satan can't affect you personally, he's going to send people to attack you, to weaken you. Like I said, what I do, and you know what, and it also, it worked for me. To where I'm desensitized to it. I got a whole compilation of videos of people hating on the church. And I look at it and sit there laughing. I, I, it's, it's entertainment for me. I get this clip, that clip, that clip. Lawyers in the CIA. Uh, one person used a map and say, look, they go over Carl's face in the ground. And that he's going to meet me at the Golden Arcs if I come to St. Louis. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm cloned. Uh, look how skinny he was back then and look at him now. When he left, he was he was cloned. I got all of them in succession. I just laugh. Mm -mm -mm. This and you have people this about the gathering of Christ Church, that about the gathering of Christ Church. And then I go click on the videos and realize the only time that someone look at their videos is if they have our title in it. Mm -hmm. So that's your work. Your works is talking against Christ's work. To show you how deep it is, show you how irrelevant your work is. That if you were to make a video actually bringing forth something strictly from you, no one actually looks at it. No one actually listens to it. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I understand why it's done. This is why. Let's read it. St. John chapter 15, verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Listen to this, brothers and sisters, because don't think that, that getting this truth is just happy time and good time is going to be smooth for you. The gates of hell comes against you after receiving this seed. And understand all others who are not in this truth become agents against you. He can use family members. He can use anything against you. So Christ is preparing his, his elite, his righteous elite for the kingdom and saying, well, listen, with this truth, especially you sisters, because sisters are more sensitive, you have to have tough skin. People that you thought was in your corner are going to turn their backs on you. You're going to look at a person and you're going to be able to see the demon on them. They're not even who they were, or who you grew up with.
People are, will lie in your face. They'll be there the whole time. Yeah, brother. With, the, with what you did and all that, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Elder. Mm -hmm. Man, listen, I'm here for the long haul. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, yeah, brother. It's all good. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's all good. Because, listen, I appreciate it, but it's lip service. Mm -hmm. Because ye that endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. There you go. Little children, love not in word, but in deed. Mm -hmm. That's right. Let your actions talk for you. And see, and this is what Christ was talking about, because Christ was sitting there saying, yeah, this night someone will betray me. And Judas was the first one. That, is it I, Lord? Is it I? Is it I? Mm -hmm. He was right there. Already took the payment. Ready to take the payment to betray Christ for 30 pieces. That's why anything else is lip service. And elder, what do I say when brothers and sisters come up to me and say, or say, elder, this, that, and you know what I say? Mm -hmm. The best thank you that you can give to me is to finish. That's right. That's right. I've seen, and because why? This is why I say that. I've seen them come and I've seen them go. And I'm still with that seed, enduring it to the end. Finish reading. Verse number 18. Uh, St. John 15, verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Know that people are going to turn on you. Christ says, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. And, and guess what? And, and Christ is like, listen, I'm the son of God. He says, listen, I came with the true light, the only light on earth and paved the way. I healed the blind. I, I gave sight to the blind and was ridiculed for it. I healed a man who was maimed and was ridiculed for it. And I'm, that's what Christ is saying. And I'm the son of God. What do you think is going to happen with you? They lied on Christ. They smeared Christ all the way to the throne. They actually uh, uh, whipped up a lynch mob to kill him. So what do you think is going to happen to you? So when you are dealing with persecution and someone turning their back on you, some of you get frustrated and get upset and say, oh my God, what? I thought it was going to be easy in this truth. No. No. You have to have tough skin, brothers and sisters, because your best friend will turn their back on you. They'll talk behind your back. They'll stab you in the back. Only, check, check this out though. Only to trigger a reaction from you. That's a test. Like, no. I'm not going to render evil for evil. I'm not going to do what this person is doing against me. You know what? I'm going to pray for that person. And guess what? The righteousness on how you treat these situations will burn heaps of coal on that person's head. It will sear their conscience because why? You took the high ground. You took the high ground. You know what? I'm not even going to go as low as you're going. I'm not even, I can't even do it. I don't have the time for it. You can be my enemy. You can say anything else what you want about me. Guess what? I love you anyway. And I pray that the Most High forgive, for, forgive your actions. And that's, man, Satan really don't like that because he wants a reaction. He wants, he said, rip them apart, hurt them, kill them, harm them. No, nah, you pray for them. Even if they hate you. <laughs> See, that's a level, isn't it? That's Christ. That's why I can sit and look at, guess what? I can sit and look at an hour 
and a half of videos of people just hating on me and crack up. I can sit there and look at it and be like, man, okay, I'm clone. Hmm. All right, that's deep. You know what? <laughs> I mean, all the work I have to do, I wish it was two of me. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> have one over there, one over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah, it's okay. See? I, I look at them because why? It's And I, I laugh. Because what people don't realize is what it really takes to do this work, endure through it, through all adversity, and endure to the end regardless of the negative. They don't, they don't understand. Right? Finish reading, other lawyer. Verse number 19. If you were of the world. If we were of the world. The world would love his own. The world would love his own. Brothers and sisters. If I was to make a video out of nowhere and say, you know what? I've seen the light. The Christian church is the light and it's the light of Christ. Let me tell you, folks. If I said, let's go to Sunday worship and all that. Every pastor that you didn't think knew that the gathering of Christ church exists would be inviting us on their platforms. To, so that they can hold up the hand and say victory, Satan. Look what I've just intru- look. Look who's in, who. Look who's in league with us. If I said the law was done away with and you can do as thou wilt, and that what what was taught in the Christian church is correct, don't you know how many pastors would break their necks to have us on their broadcast so that they can so 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 that they can just proclaim and gloat. So that they can use me to say, well, okay, you're an Israelite. Now, now what I need you to do here publicly amongst these Christians is help us take down the Israelites. Can you do that? They would love me. They would ask. I mean, they would have me on their programs. They would, they would raise money for the church, everything. If I renounced the truth and went back to Christianity. They would love me. If I said the people over there are the true Jews and and we're we're, we're just Gentiles in Christ and. You know, and just reject and go out there and get on their platforms and just talk down on every Israelite group and just talk down on and give us the dirt. Any experiences you had amongst them? And I start speaking like that, man, would Satan gloat. The world would love Rikar Shiar. But you know what? I would lose my soul. I see you yanking people over there, huh? <laughs> that's, that's what they want. You know? Oh, hey, 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 that's yank him. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's go, Edward Lloyd. Verse 9 or 19, Salakia. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. The world would love us if we were of the world. But because you're not of the world. And understand, folks, this applies to you with that seed. You're different. You are different. You have to own that and understand that many have eyes that cannot see and ears that cannot hear. They will see it and they will understand it, but they don't, they, don't, they don't understand the depth of this truth. And how important it is for them, for them to grasp it while there's still time. You do. You understand it. Read. But because you're not of the world... But I've chosen you out of the world. Because you were chosen out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. The world hate you. Now, let's see what's in the world. What's hating you? Let's go to 2 John 2 and 15. I mean, 1 John 2 and 15. Thank you, other lawyer. Why are they hating you? 
First John chapter two, verse 15. Read. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. So Christ told us through the, through the apostles, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Read. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. If you try to get the acceptance of this world, the love of the father isn't in you. Why does the world hate you? This is why. What's in the world? Read. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, is not of the Father. That's why they hate you. That's why they hate you. Because your existence walking amongst them in the spirit of Christ highlights how vain they are. And they can't exist normally around you. They feel that you're too high minded. You're this, you're that, because it's shining a light on their darkness and how vain they are, how empty they are. When the most high want them to feel that. He want them to feel that emptiness so they'll understand how much they're missing and repent. This is why the world hates you. Because they're empty. That you don't have all the material goods and all the other things that the others have, but you're more content. You're more happy. You're content. They can see it in you. You're not in the rat race. So they're like, what's what this person? Why aren't they in a rat race for me? Shouldn't they be worried like me? Shouldn't they be doing? And guess what? It turns to hatred. Because you're not supposed to be at peace. See? You're not supposed to be at peace. You're supposed to be in a rat race with them. Misery loves company. That's why they hate you. Folks, we dropping it tonight. Many are called, but guess what? Only a few are chosen. All of us were called to this, but who's going to stand, folks? Who will stand? I think Elder Gaja wants to come in. Elder Gaja, all right, come on. Hold on. Also, we have that, that baptism email. GOCC baptisms. Okay, I will do that. We have two announcements. We have one announcement uh, that I'm going to put out there for Bishop Amoff's uh, uh, music project. I'm going to bring that in a little later. And we have a new email address strictly for baptisms. This way, you don't have to ask on the ask on the broadcast. Well, I want to be baptized or send through the administration email or the academy email okay elder lawyer what is the new baptism if you want baptisms and strictly baptisms do not send any any other request to this email with this email we can now quickly distribute baptism requests to the regional elders and get your baptisms done mm -hmm. great elder lawyer g-o-c-c -C baptisms that's with an s on the end of baptisms at gmail.com. Again, that's GOCC baptisms at gmail.com. GOCC baptisms. Let me type it in for the brothers and sisters. GOCC baptisms, right? Yes, sir. At gmail? At gmail.com. All right. That's it, right? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to put it in there. GOCC baptisms at gmail.com. All right. GOCC baptisms at gmail.com. Baptisms with an S. This way, you, you, you don't have to worry about waiting for a long time for a response. That email is strictly for baptisms. If you send it at about anything else outside of baptisms, that will be bounced back to you. We'll let you know we only deal with baptisms through this email. This way, we can comb through them quickly. Get them to the regional elders. The regional elders contact you so that we can get this done for you. Time is running out. And now you're not going to get, you know, lost in the shuffle of the administration emails. Speaking of that, we do have a new Hebrew and Bible Academy, October 11th. Okay, October 11th is the next Hebrew and Bible Academy. The creation of the universe. We're going into the most high and the heavenly throne. And we also have 
a special, a special lesson that's going to expose the Roman Empire, breaking down the Roman Empire and, and what you got it. The blood dagger. OK, the satanic blood dagger to let you know that they have always in their religions, they have always, especially the Romans and the Europeans, they've always targeted children through sacrifice. That's what they tried to do with Christ. They tried to kill him as a sacrifice. I'm going to be going into that week four of the Hebrew and Bible Academy, and I hope you all can uh, uh, join us. OK, October 11th. Go to historytimes.org for enrollment. Historytimes.org, okay? The Scarlet Dagger, that's what it's called. Exposing Rome and the Scarlet Dagger. Thank you. I didn't have it in front of me. It's going to be serious. And I have, an, I have a lot of new history books uh, to actually... Um, bring forth in this academy. So, I mean, we have a plethora of new books. You, you want to be a part of these classes. Historytimes.org. Uh, okay, just go there. Historytimes.org and enroll. is only two payments. $75 for two payments will cover you for three months. More information in one lesson than you will receive in any religious institution anywhere. We guarantee it. With one lesson. Thank you. October 11th. All right. Many are called... Few are chosen. One second. I'm going to turn down the uh, the sound for a second. So don't worry about it if you don't hear us for a second. I'm going to turn down the sound and bring it back up in a moment. Okay. And bring Elder Gaja in. Here in this place. <laughs> Man, what a great song. Oh, I see Elder Gaja. Yeah. One second. One second. And I'm bringing in Blog Talk. So if you're interested in coming in on Blog Talk, 515-605-9327. One moment. One. Okay. Blog Talk Radio. Okay, we're 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 live here on Blog Talk as well as. Okay, I think we have Elder Gaja here, right? Hey, shalom, shalom, shalom. Can you hear me? Shalom, Gaja. Blessed Tabernacle. How things are going over there in England? Everything's good, man. Everything's good. All praises to the Most High. Okay, let me put your picture up here so that they can see you. All right, um, one second. 
You know what we're going into? Uh, you obviously, you've obviously heard the, uh, uh, the, uh, the prelogue, uh, the prologue I went into. Many are called, few are chosen. Are we grateful? Are we grateful hey. for what the Most High bestowed upon us? This seat. Hey, Go ahead. <laughs> this is one. This is one of the blessings. This is one of them. This is one of them nights. You with me? Well, it's night time for me here. Just sitting down, listening in. This is this is deep on levels. You with me? Yes. On levels, man. On levels, and um, you know, it just you know, like even even last week, the quest when the question was asked last week, um, what have we learned? And I said to you that, um, you know, taking things are granted, you with me? Yeah. And coming back into this now, it's, you know, it's like the same type of, same sort of reflection going on here, you with me? Yeah. And, yo, you know, this, you know, as you know, man, the, the battle, the struggle, the fight, it's a real, it's real, you with me? It's a real life fight. Yeah. That, that we have to endure with, um, since I've been back in the UK and I've not, I've, I've not really put it out there publicly that I'm here, but I've been, um, I've been talking to a lot of people, a lot of people, um, having meetings with them. I'm just, you know, just checking in on everybody, seeing how everyone is doing, man, and I'm listening to the, the, the concerns, the problems and so on. And it's like everyone right now at this point in the time, in, in this, at this point in the earth, right, that I'm encountering, is really feeling it, you with me? Is really feeling that struggle, that 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 fight. There is a fight going on right now, for like you said earlier, for the souls. You with me? There's like a tug and war going on right now mm -hmm. for the for the souls of the people, and it's real. And if and if and if if I've never seen it any time before, yo, I'm seeing it now. You with me? You know, just, just, you know, on, on a day, on a day to day walking, you with me? And, you know, them, them precepts before going over the, the, the um, going over the, the parable of the soul, you know, and the question is, you know, who are you? Who, which seed are you? Which seed do you want to be? Which, you understand? Yeah. What are, what, 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 what you're going to do? And, um, you know, it, 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 it oh, Ella, I mean, it, it, it been, it been deep just listening to it, man, um, on, on, on many levels. And I wanted to read this, right? Go on. I'm in the book of, um, I'm in the book of Sirach. I'm in Sirach, the second chapter, right? Yes. And it reads, it reads, it says, My son, if thou come to serve the Most High, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. Constantly. You know. Christ says, he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. It's a constant endurance. And may not haste in time of trouble. Mm. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully mm. and be patient. When thou art changed to a low estate. Mm. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Believe in him, and he will help thee. Order thy way aright, and trust him. Yea, sorry, excuse me. You that fear the most high, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest you fall. You that fear the Most High, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. You that fear the Most High, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. Verse 10. Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Most High and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called, that called upon him? So listening to this broadcast, Elder, and just, you know, them, them precepts are ringing home to me that, you know, something we have to constantly endure. You said, you said something earlier um, about Judas and, and, and the betrayal, you know, and the backbiting, the, you, know, you know, friends going against you, family going against you. And, you know, I even said, I even said this, I even said this recently, man, that, you know, something. I probably I, I I you know if, if if I was if I was put in a situation where I had a, I had a 
I had a knife at my throat or a gun at my head. At my head. I, I'll probably, I'll probably, you know, I'll probably deny him. No, man, I don't know him. But I don't think I'd ever be the one to kiss him. You with me? Mm. I'm, I'm not that one. I'm not going to, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be that one to kiss him and, 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 and leave him there. You with me? No. But like I said, man, this is a, this, this is a, a, a very deep broadcast. And the timing of it as well, and the you know it it is it is it is real. You with me? Many are called, but few are chosen. Looking at the parable of the soul, where 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 do we want? Where are we gonna be? What seed are we gonna be? You with me? And and each man have the opportunity right now to be that seed that bring forth that fruit, that bring forth that increase. So within you know within the feast, man, I I you know I pray to the Most High with all humility. With all, with all, um, with all sincerity of heart, that, that you know, I am, I, I, I can, I can be one of them. That, that the Messiah goes, all right, servant, good job. Fall to the back, of, back of the line, fall in, and 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 keep it moving. You with me? Yeah. You understand? And and you know, it's, I, I'm seeing it, man. It, 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 it is manifold. You with me? This is the hour of temptation. This is, this is it. You get me? This is it, man. This is, this is it. Mm. Yeah. You right on, Elder, Elder God. Anything else? Right, I can't even add to that. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, but that, that, that that's really it, Elder man. I mean, like I said, a very timely broadcast. You with me? We can't take it for granted. We have to really, really examine it, really look at it, and and see every day as a blessing. See every day as a as a as a as 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 mercy. You know, it, an, an, as an opportunity to get it right, to set it right. You with me? To make sure that yo, you know. When, 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 yo, we're here. You with me? Um, El lawyer said something last week, I think, in a meeting. Yo, you know, get your butt, get your minds prepared. Get... Uh, you cut out, gotcha. I have to move. Somebody's going to have with me. Yeah. And somebody's going to have to paddle the boat. You with me? So it's going to, you know, there's no, there's no floating off in, into the sky. There's no, there's no UFO. There's no getting beamed up. It's not Star Wars. You know, so we have to get that, we have to get that mindset that that, yeah. that mindset of, of of mind and body mm. ready to go. We got somebody yeah. have to build the boat, somebody gonna have to paddle the boat, mm. and that's it, man. And that, that's deep, Gaja, because in the midst of this COVID thing and and how the Earth reset all at once during this time, even during the time before Passover, up until where we are now. You know, it's humbling. It, it, I'm going to tell you right now, Gaja. Excuse me. I'm going to tell you right now. It's humbling. And I'm grateful. Why? When all this stuff stopped, so many people out there. Because I'm going to tell you. Those who didn't know they were alone realized how alone they were. When everything broke down and no one could go outside because everything closed at once. That was a real live reality check. Mm -hmm. And you know what? To know that in this work, even though it started just with a few men, that we had a full body in preparation for this time was such a relief. I mean, what if we didn't prepare? What if we didn't, through the ministry, talk about this and, and prepare real time before it happened? Mm -hmm. The fact that we weren't alone in a, at a time where, where so many people were left alone and confused. Mm -hmm. That confirmed to me during this time of this COVID thing, the, the importance of this work and the body. Because when it comes down to it, we're going to be all we have. Mm -hmm. Especially when they pull the plug in this world. From this world and introduce the mark of the beast, then it's gonna know, like it said said in Edris, at that time, then it will be no it will be known who is my elect, who really believe in God. Mm -hmm. So that's you know, and that's why I wanted to talk about being called. And are we grateful for that calling? And what is your examples of that? And what are you grateful for? Because being out there amongst the brothers and sisters. It had me appreciate the fact that the Most High have given me a dwelling, a place to lay my head. 
Okay. I mean, you're talking about cold showers. You're talking about water. <laughs> you had to wait for the water pressure to come on while the whole body is waiting to shower. Mm -hmm. You're talking about people cooking food on fire. People using propane heaters or whatever to keep their tent tents hot. People using hot water bottles to sleep on, to stay warm. Looking at the children enjoying the wilderness and I'm like, you know what? This is what the Most High is preparing us for. Total, mm -hmm. total dependence on each other in the wilderness. And I thank the Most High that we're able to, we're able to practice this tabernacle real time like he said, be out there dwelling in tents and booths to understand what our forefathers experienced in the wilderness and what we will soon experience. Is that, is that a city of, of in I the wilderness? Last, yeah. I think it was last year or the year before is that I've observed, right? Say the first tabernacles we did in, in, in 2020, in 2014, nobody could, nobody could build a tent. Nobody knew you know, to start a fire. Yeah. Watching the sec watching the second tabernacles and watching it now is that we do we're doing a lot of the things by nature, by second nature. You with me just going out there adapting and living. And you know, when 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 we go into the into the book of uh, Deuteronomy the fourth chapter, four Deuteronomy four, five and six, it tells us that if we keep these laws and statutes, right, this is going to be our wisdom amongst the nation. So we are doing this right now, living out there in boots. This entire earth is about to collapse. Even the Gentiles are gonna have to come learn how to live um, in boots and learn how to how to how to how to pray and have the Most High protect them, put an edge around them, like they said the angels watch watch round about them. Yeah. So this is these are what we're doing right now is is rehearsal for the righteous acts. Yeah. And 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 and, and we see it now more than any. I mean, think about it, Allah. Um, in January, right? In January this year, if someone had said, yo, listen, you know, you know, by March, we won't be able to get up. Most people that look like, nah, man, you're crazy. By March, you know, and I'm putting this out there. Listen, don't be shocked if, if, if you wake up tomorrow and you can't spend or use whatever currency you think you have. Don't be shocked. You hit me because it's coming. It's, that's where they're going. They're gonna, they, for the, in, order for them, in order for them to bring out this, this mark of the beast, they have to crash this existing system, and that's what they're doing. All of these lockdowns, these curfew, are, are forcing people out of jobs, are forcing um, a recession. You would, and, and, and they know it. Every, every every day you see it on the news. So it, it is going for collapse. You with me? So that they can come out and roll out their new their new their new order, their new system. And you know, as it, as as it says in um in 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 Ezekiel, I think it's the um. Ezekiel 15, I think it is, it says that, yo, they're going to know at the end of this that there were prophets amongst them telling them, listen, prepare. You with me? Get yourself, get yourself, get your house in order. Get yourself in order because it's coming. And, you know, I see protests going on. Um, I, saw, I saw protests in London. I see protests going on here. There. But you can't stop the most eyes plan with, with, um, by protest. You with me? We have to be awake and watch what's going to happen, like you said. And the, the, the prudent man hides himself from the evil. We can't, nothing we can do, we can't pray away or stop or protest away what is about to go down. We can't. The most I tell us is going to happen, so it must come true. Yeah. It must happen. So we have to just prepare and, 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 and watch. Yeah. Well... Well, El Elder God, just one thing else I want to show before we... Uh... We uh, we open up the calls. Anything else? Because there's one thing else I have to show. Uh, well, man, I'm good for now. I'll, I'll go, go on mute. Just go on mute, and you can you can pop in at any time, right? All right. Okay. Let me let me. That's Elder Gaja. All praises be to the Most High. He's over the UK right now, and I like to say all glory and honor to uh, uh the bishops, the, the elders, the deacons, the the officers that are holding it down in the UK. London is going strong. Uh, strong brothers. I, I mean, they, they have ingenuity, they have enterprise, they're, they're entrepreneurs, and they're going to use all that work in London and the other areas of England for this work. Now, there's a lot we have to get right there, but I'll tell you what, we have some good brothers, and I'm, and I'm sure we're going to fix everything that, that needs fixing. Um, 
Do me a favor, Yorak. Um, there's a bag in the car that has books in it. I need you to go grab those for me real quick. Um, woo! Oh, no, that's not it. There's a bag, it looks like a, a little duffel. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have some stuff for you. Lord have mercy, and I'm going to bring it out in the Hebrew and Bible Academy, but I'm, you know, have to give you a little taste, mm. you know? <laughs> Woo! We got some stuff. A brother, Yashar, came to me, Elder Lawyer. He has some stuff for you, too, uh, at the... Um, at the campground. Yeah. And, you know, we just sat around the table just discussing all the little intricacies of Christ's crucifixion. Mm. We went into, he asked a question, why did, why did Satan contend with Michael for uh, Moses' body? Right, right. And, you know, and we're sitting around a table. And I'm like, well, what was they practicing in Egypt? They were mummifying. And 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 de deifying their pharaohs and and their, you know, and their princes. Mm. That's why Joseph says, "Well, take me out of Egypt. Make sure when you leave, take my bones, because what the pharaohs were doing, what the Canaanites were doing, in conjunction with the with the Egyptians. It's all about DNA. It's all about. And I'm gonna go into the." I'm going to go into the Hyksos, the Hyksos period when our people were in Egypt. I'm going into that, this academy. But they was contending with the body because Satan wanted Moses' body for a specific purpose of what they're doing with DNA. I'm going to be going into that. That's it. I'm going to be going into that in the academy with the Hyksos period. And we're just sitting around just discussing certain things. And the brother gave me a bag of goodies. Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. It was given to us a Webster Dictionary. A Webster Dictionary from 1936. Two volumes. Okay. Thank you, Brother Yashar. And in it where it says the word woolly, as of the hair, it says a Negro. Mm. Woolly like a Negro. Where it says woolly. Where it mm. says heads and hairs white like wool. Right. Well, in 1930, they knew that, that woolly hair meant that Christ was a black man. I got it in here. And there's a lot more. Also, Yes, we got it. A translation from the four gospels from the Syriac, thus the, the Synatic Palimpsest. What is this? This is the original book of Matthew, the older translation before the book of Matthew we have in the King James Version. And it clearly states and clearly states that Joseph is Christ's father in the original Matthew. It tells you that. That the Most High said that he that that through Joseph he's going to bring forth Christ. I will bear thee a son, Joseph. It's in here. You know we're bringing this out, tearing down the satanic pagan Christianity and their worship of Semiramis that they're hiding under the name of Mary through the virgin birth. Got it. Ancient post-flood history. Going into what happened before the flood, the history and the timeline of history. Also breaking down in the book, it makes it clear that Joseph was, was named Pharaoh and what date he was named Pharaoh. We're going into our history of Egypt. Why? Because the same way the Most High delivered us out of Egypt, 
He's going to do it a second time out of the spiritual Egypt in Babylon. But keep in mind, even though the Most High guided us out of Egypt, we had to walk. We had to leave. I'm going to show the comparisons against about ancient Egypt in comparison to modern day Egypt or Babylon. Egypt, which is also Babylon. And to tell you in the book of Revelation, the place which is spiritually Egypt and Babylon or Sodom and Gomorrah. It's America. I'm going to be showing the comparisons and going into the history that they know that it was us that made Egypt great. So even those that are trying to be under Egyptology and all that and saying the greatness of Egypt, there is no greatness of Egypt without the children of Israel. Watch what we do in the academy, October 11th. Another thing, the lost apocrypha of the Old Testament, which breaks down the assumption of Moses in the battle with Satan being the god of the Mesopotamian area. Why was he contending with Michael for Moses' body? DNA. What was he going to do with that DNA? We're going to teach that in the academy. October 11th. <laughs> Boy, I love the Hebrew and Bible Academy, boy. I tell you, uh, we're always dropping bombs after bombs after bombs. The Christian church, guess what? It's a shame because a lot of people in the Christian church thirst for knowledge and understanding, but the true understanding is concealed. A lot of the information that we have, the Catholic church have under their Vatican's and all that, they have been knew we were Israel, but they conceal this information from Christians. See? And I don't know what they're learning in Islam. But you know what? In our Hebrew and Bible Academy and the lessons we do, like what we're talking about tonight, it breaks our people free, in which we don't have to no longer be dependent on the Gentiles filtering us information that belongs to us. We can just, just bogart them, get them out of the way, and just deal directly with the throne of the Almighty and read our information to understand the true gospel, the true doctrine. See, what's wrong is some of our people look, look for confirmation through Esau, through the white man. It's not truth unless the white man confirm it for you. When it's upon them being Romans, speaking of the white man, Esau, it's upon Esau to keep you in darkness. How can you go to them for the light of Christ when it benefits them keeping you in darkness? Let's go now. Many are called, a few are chosen. This tabernacle, are we grateful? Let's hear your testimonies. 515-605-9327. That's right, the number is on your screen. And yes, we do appreciate all those who actually donate uh, through the cash app, dollar sign, G-O-C-C, 144, donate. That goes towards our broadcast, the elders here. Because why? Because the church money is the church money. But what you give to us in offering through this, that goes directly to us so that we can do things. When we buy books and do certain things, that's our books. The church money is the church money. And what you send to us in appreciation for offerings go towards what, what we have to do in the work as far as our person. So that's why we have that there. And I want to say a humble thank you, thank you for all those who do donate uh, in appreciation to the elders and what we bring forth uh, to you weekly in appreciation for that. So I would like to say a humble thank you. 515 6059327. Let's start here with the 614. Make sure there's nothing in playing in the background, please. 614 area code, then the 901 area code, then the 228 area code. We're going to take y'all three first. But before that, Elder Lawyer, I need you to read that for me. Matthew 22 and 10. Let's read it. Saying Matthew chapter 22, verse 10. Read. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. So you know when we go out and teach, the word is open for those that are bad and those that are good. The Most High don't, don't discriminate. He give everyone a chance. He's bidding all to this wedding. Read. Verse 11. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, 
How camest thou in hither not having a garment? Now, how do one get a garment, folks? Baptism. So if anyone's teaching that you're not supposed to be baptized, they're of the devil. Okay, straight out. Read. Then said the king to that servant, or uh, verse 12, and he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to that servant, but, or to the servants, bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. Hell. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because that person had the truth, but didn't follow the path. For that person... Even though they have the same opportunity as everyone else, they'll, they'll be what? Well in a gnashing of teeth. So if someone stand before Christ and say, well, I rejected baptism because I was following the law. Christ say, what? What are you talking about? Unless you followed every part of the law, you're guilty of all of it. Mm -hmm. It was through the baptism, my grace covered what you didn't follow, mm -hmm. the things you didn't understand. So what you mean the law is your baptism? You getting up in that fire. Okay. Well, I followed the law. No, you didn't. Because if you break, if you just going to be covered with the law, that means you must follow every bit of the law of Moses. Every bit of it, or you're guilty of it all. Mm -hmm. That's right. So without the baptism, what? Your garment isn't clean. So who's covering you from year to year? Who's covering you up until the judgment? You denied my baptism and I... I purposely set the disciples up to baptize to show a difference between my ministry and the Pharisees. The path to the kingdom opposed to the world. And you're going to deny talking about you follow the law? Well, my people followed the law and went into captivity. Mm -hmm. That's right. So if you're going to come with just the law, guess what? You're coming up short. You better find some water and now compare yourself as a vessel of the Most High, compare yourself before the Almighty with the laws you're breaking and say, Lord, I repent from breaking this law, that law, that law, and the laws I don't know, please cover me. I repent. And then you're baptized, and at that time in heaven, you receive that white garment. All sins are washed away. But if you're going to try to say the law covers you, guess what? Without baptism, you're guilty of every part of the law. Every part of it. That's right. You can't say, well, I'm not following this because Christ gave us grace after rejecting his baptism. It's the baptism that covers you, that graces you. Huh? Finish reading, other Lloyd. Yes, sir. St. Matthew chapter 22, verse number 14. You getting guilty of it all? Uh, no, so go much, ahead. But it's fine. No, go ahead. Uh, verse 14. For many are called, but few are chosen. But what? For many are called, but few are chosen. Because many are called, but few are chosen. We all was called with that same seed for the kingdom. Christ didn't discriminate. It's what you did with that seed that dictates your reward, that specify what you receive once making it into the kingdom. What else you have, other lawyer? Yes, sir, just on that point. This is Romans 3 and 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the law, shall, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. Come on. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Yeshua the anointed, Unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption, which or that is in Christ Yeshua, or Yeshua the anointed. Let's get James 2 and 10. Yes, sir. And this is for those who claim that they don't got to be baptized because they follow the law. Then they'll miss misquote a scripture to make you believe that the law is greater than baptism when you're not supposed to play one with the other one against the other or substitute one for the other 
Don't let no one deceive you, folks. There's only one path. Let's get James 2 and 10. James chapter 2, verse 10. Read. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. See that? If you keep the whole law and claim that that covers you, well, guess what? If you break one law, claiming that, well, I'm filed on the law, so I don't need baptism, you're guilty of the whole law. And what happened to the guilty? The children of the guilty went into captivity. You understand that? So that means if you're not going to accept the baptism of Christ, because with the baptism of Christ com comes with what he did before the heavenly throne. After Calvary, when he became our high priest and shed his blood for our sins. Well, you have to get baptized to be covered through that priesthood. So if you're not accepting his baptism, that's why he gave it to the, the, the disciples, the 12 pillars. Understand that you need what? You need all the artifacts and a temple to sacrifice in. You need to find Solomon's temple and do it exactly like the Most High gave it to, to Solomon mm -hmm. and to the Levites. And you better not ought or leave out one piece of it or you're guilty of it all. So you think putting down a swine sandwich is enough? No. That means you must follow everything to the letter. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you're rejecting the baptism. You can't, guess what? You can't mess up on any level of the law if you don't accept Christ's baptism. You must follow everything to the letter or you're guilty of the whole thing. I'd rather just get baptized. What about you? Mm -hmm. Let's do it now. And it's okay if they don't. Many a call. Few are chosen. Uh, 614 area code. Shalom. You're, okay. live, you're live with the Gathering of Christ Church. Your name? Hi, elders. My name is Tawana. Hi, Tawana. What you got? Hey, I, I just wanted to tell you guys thank you so much for, you know, allowing the Most High to use you. Um, I just came into the truth. Um, I've been in the church, you know, forever. And um, I, the seed has been planted, but it was never watered. You know, I was missing something in the, in the Christian church. And so, you know, finally I was able to go into the military. I was in the military for three years. You know, I got married, had kids. Something was still missing. And I just thank the most high for having his grace and mercy on me because he kept me through so many different things. And he kept that seed hidden. It wasn't water, but it was hidden. And then when I came into the truth and then I started watching you guys, my seed started sprouting. And I just want to tell you, thank you. Well, sister, bless you. You know my answer to all that, right? You know what the answer is? What's the best thank you? You there? Were you with me? Hey, Elder, I didn't hear you. I said... I'm here. I didn't hear you. What would be the greatest thank you? Keep going. There you go to finish. <laughs> Ye that endure unto the end, the same shall be <laughs> saved. Okay. Thank you, sister, and bless you. That's right. All right. Thank you. God bless you, guys. Well, bless you, sister. All praises be to the Most High and Yeshua. And happy tabernacle. Oh, 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 by the way, I just wanted to let you guys know also that um, I just used the the email address to get baptized. Well, so. <laughs> praise the most high. <laughs> Bless you. So I live in Columbus, so I'm looking forward to hearing from somebody. Oh, you will. You will. I'm glad. That's why. I should have thought of this a long time ago. It came at the tabernacle where I spoke to Elder Lloyd. I'm like, you know what? We got a, a lot of people trying to get in right now in the midst of this, what's going on. Mm -hmm. And and we have to just have a specific, because there's nothing more important than than repenting and being baptized so that you can receive that spirit that, that guides us together. So we need to, I say, let's do an email specifically for that so that we can hone in on 
on as many as we can before the door closes. So thank you, sister. And we, we're going to get someone to you in no time. OK. OK, thank you. Bless you. Nine zero one area code. Many are called, few are chosen. And keep in mind, you shall be hated for Christ's sake. Many shall hate you. Are you willing to stand? And on top of that, above all, are you grateful for what the Most High blessed you with? And I found that after being amongst the brothers and sisters, it, it made me appreciate more. Mm. It made me appreciate just to be able to get up in a bed and you know what I mean? Have have a place to stay because, hey, there's people out in the street. Mm, that's right. And here it is. Sometimes we complain about the little things and not realizing, not taking, you know, not reflecting on what the most I've already blessed us with. Mm. Just be grateful. 901 area code, right? That's the next one? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, if you're waiting in the queue, 515-605-9327. Do us a favor and make sure you hit the one if you have a question or comment, okay? 901 area code. 901. You're live. Shalom, man. Shalom. Shalom. Your name? What you got? It's Samson. I ain't talked to you in a while. From Memphis, Tennessee. Happy Tabernacles, brother. Bless you. Thank you. What you got? Yeah, well, you know, you talk about the seeds, you know, uh, I had my children, uh, Elder, they were getting there. You know, you know what got them over is uh, the Nick Cannon incident, right? Since he's so popular. Mm. Uh, they say they were riding in the car and they say, Dad, that's what Dad said. We was the Hebrew Israelites. But when he retracted his statement, and that's probably pertaining to maybe, uh, you know, the seed being choked and so on. Yeah, it's just like they they went back to everything else, and it's just been you. You right, it's been a battle, man. Eight years, and man, my kids, whoa! It's like that. I don't know if the Lord used Nick Cannon to a certain point to get the attention of these young folks, but um, mine was getting there. So I'm gonna just keep praying for him, brother. Hey, brother, it's good news. And guess what? That was. Let me tell you, the Most High used these men. Yes, sir. You have to realize that's a seed planted. Now, keep in mind, and for the first time, I'm doing my, I doing my, I'm doing my gardening. I did it right after the Passover and seeing the fruits of my labor. Sometimes you go outside and look at that ground and be like, man, what is this? <laughs> I'm just looking at this. I'm just looking at dirt here. <laughs> You're putting water and it's just dirt there. The seed is I in did. there, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at it. And then I, then I go outside and I see something sprout out. And I'm like, okay, this is cool, but I don't know how I'm going to eat. I, you know, I, I, don't, I don't see a carrot coming out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see zucchini here. Mm -hmm. see, but then you, then, you go, then you look, and then I'm looking at my watermelons, and I see a little watermelon spring up off a vine. This teeny little thing, and then it becomes big and big and big. As, and I'm like, I'm throwing some more water on that thing. So the whole thing is when it comes to Nick Cannon, Kendrick Lamar, let me tell you, something is going on in the earth right now. It's Christ planting seeds. It's what they're going to do with those seeds. Mm -hmm. An another thing, brother, it's just make it easier for you to do what you need to do. That's all. Because sometimes the most I use some of these people just to light a spark. But you have to right. take it up from there. So that, that seed been planted now. Now, oh yeah, I'm now, doing. now it's cool to be an Israelite because Kendrick Lamar can outright say it without anyone claiming he's a racist. Okay, now what the wild and out cat? Okay, now give me his name. Uh, Nick Cannon can say it, mm -hmm. and now it's cool, mm -hmm. and that's why they coming against him. Let me tell you, there was no retraction. So you have to understand. You have to listen to his. His conversation again and understand how witty the brother is. Mm -hmm. There was no retraction. Hey. Look, listen, listen to it. What he said was he apologized if he hurt someone because that wasn't his intentions. OK, his intentions wasn't to hurt you by stating that we're the children of Israel. He never took that back. Mm hmm. 
He never took that back. That's good to hear because that, yeah, yeah, that's good to hear because I didn't really, you're right, I didn't really listen to it, but uh, well, good, that's great. Listen to it again because what the brother did was tactful. He sat down with the guy and he said, well, listen, I apologize. I didn't know how much I was going to harm someone, but he also made it clear that the conversation must be had. Mm hmm. And if it starts right here, then it's okay. Mm. Okay, so you have to understand. And not only that, let me tell you, one thing about Nick Cannon and others, they don't realize what they're up against. Mm -hmm. Because under Christ, the spirit of forgiveness lies amongst the righteous. But these people don't believe in Christ. Right. They will never forgive Nick Cannon. Mm -hmm. They will never forgive him. Because for, to them, you're either on our side or you're playing for the other team. And that's Christ's team. And they don't care about any of that. They don't care about none of it. They'll loosely connect you to Hitler or something like that or whatever the case is and, and look to destroy you. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. There's something else going on right now. You have Lord, Jam Lord Jamar. Or what's his name? Lord Lamar mm -hmm. or Jamar. Mm -hmm. And the other brother, what's his name? The the, the comedian. Uh, Godfrey. The brother Godfrey. They're coming out all up saying, well, listen, we're not dealing with this thing about Vlad using black people anymore. Using black people to gain notoriety and, and build a catalog without appreciating the culture and the people who have gotten him there. Mm-hmm. And they came straight out and say, listen, if this guy was interviewing people, Jewish, Russian culture, there would be no subscribers. Mm -hmm. So something is happening where a seed is being planted where our people are saying, no more can you take advantage of us. We're tired of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, you came in our culture. You were able to make a career off of us. And every time you look, every time we look, you're crapping on our leaders. You're crapping on our people. And without us, you, you, Vlad TV and them guys, there will be nothing without us. And now our people are waking up. Seeds are being planted. Mm -hmm. Who would he be without us? So, of course. Not much because he is very, he very arrogant. Yeah, yeah. And then he's going to come. Every, and then that's what the brother said. They says he claimed to be an atheist, atheistic guy that don't even practice Judaism. But every time something happens, he runs in defense of the tribe. Mm -hmm. I thought you was atheist. Mm -hmm. But every time you look, you're towing the company line and getting on code with your people against our people. Mm -hmm. So it's time we get on code. <laughs> they call, I think the most time, they calling him out. It's so, so happened that it's deep. It's a few rap. All we did was show a video of uh, the, the one guy, Godfrey, dropping what he was dropping on his program. And guess what? They struck our our webpage for two weeks to let you know there's something deep going on with that Vlad TV. Because everyone else can play Vlad and nothing happens, but we just played the audio and they struck our page. Thank you, brother. And I'm glad your children are waking up. Notice that. Huh? Okay, what, uh, uh, one last question, uh, Elder Ricard. Uh, you, I, a few broadcasts ago, I heard that you was going to Chicago or something. I was look, looking to be baptized, and I had emailed you all that I'm in Memphis. Well, brother, listen, we've moved everything to the baptism email. We'll give it to you. We'll give it to you, and we'll handle it from there so that it's smooth selling. We'll get someone to get to you in no time from the East Coast, and it's done. Hey, hey Elder Lawyer, Give them that, that email again. Yes, sir. GOCC Baptisms with an S at gmail.com. Again, bat, GOCC Baptisms at gmail.com. You do that, and we'll get with you, brother. All right? Mm -hmm. Hey, this Shalom. Uh, shalom. Shalom. Welcome shalom. to the family. Yeah, you asked something? Right. Yeah. No, I was just making that point. His relatives probably didn't see the interview with the rabbi. They probably just saw the initial thing where he's, yeah. you know, apologizing. Yeah. To Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of people are jumping to conclusions without hearing that whole interview. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. They think that he's acquiescing and apologizing. No, he's not. Not at all. Mm -hmm. 
when you look at it, I, I think it's very tactful what the what the brother's mm-hmm. doing. It's very tactful. Mm-hmm. Because what he's doing is he, he he's apologizing broadly for if he hurts someone. Right. Because that wasn't his intentions. He didn't know giving hope to his people could hurt your people. So I need some understanding here. Right. <laughs> How when I give my people hope, that hurts you. And it came out in a way he didn't he didn't quantify it the way I did quickly, but it came out. He definitely made that point clear. Mm-hmm. Like we have to get to understand each other. I read your book. I read what you've gone through. But then, OK. You need to do the same for what we're dealing with also and understand what we're going through. Mm-hmm. And not only that, if we're both Jews, you a Jew and I'm a Jew. Why can't we have this discussion together? Why can't we discuss us blacks being Jews then? That came out too. What's wrong with me saying I'm a Jew? Right. So that came out. So right. And if I could mention as well, even, yeah. even the wisdom in um, him stating that he apologized. For those who saw the interview, he stated to the rabbi, which goes into what you were stating earlier, that they don't believe in Christ. So they don't necessarily forgive people. They will run, they will continue to push the narrative against you and say that you're Hitler, so on and so forth, yeah. until you're crushed and pushed into a corner somewhere yep. with nothing. So he stated what? I apologized three times, which according to your religion, you must forgive me. Exactly. So now they have no choice but to forgive him or be shown as hypocrites exactly. according to their belief. So let you know he studied them on a certain level. He mm-hmm. says, well, Rabbi, it says according to your religion, if someone apologized three times, He's forgiven. Mm-hmm. Am I forgiven? Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. And then the guy said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I forgive you. <laughs> he, he, it was hard. He had to pull that out of Right. Him. Okay. Right. But then another thing he said, one thing I won't apologize for is white supremacy. And you notice that the rabbi didn't push back on that at all. Why? What they're saying is you can talk about any white man you want. Drag them through the mud. But you better not talk about Jews. Mm -hmm. Now, that's deep in of itself because they're white. Mm -hmm. But so they don't mind if you talk about Trump. They don't mind if you talk about any white person. Mm -hmm. To show you what they feel about anyone else outside of themselves, even if they're white. Right. On, I'll tell you what. It's like this. I will pay money, set up a business, and which I will promote and give you all the budget you, you, you want for WAP. WAP, I'll give you all the money. As a matter of fact, for WAP, I will give you an unlimited budget. I'll give you an unlimited budget if you talk about killing and selling drugs to your own people and treating your, your own sisters like harlots. Mm. But if you say one thing against us, if you try to claim that you're going to do anything like that to white people or to us, mm-hmm. we're cutting you off. We're going to cut off your business. We're going to make sure you don't can't work anywhere. You can say that. A matter of fact, even DJ Vlad, he got big as a DJ playing NWA, playing gangster rap. That's how mm-hmm. he was a DJ playing music that's, that's talking about killing and destroying black people. Right. And on top of that, using our women as harlots. He was playing that music. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. But yet he's offended with one quote from Farrakhan. Mm-hmm. Farrakhan can't make one quote about them. Mm-hmm. But it's okay for DJ Vlad to get big playing music that denigrates our culture, that, that destroys our people. Mm-hmm. What's wrong with this picture? Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> you want to know who's ru- ruling the world? You, you, you know who's ruling the world or, or, or what people who are in power, the people that you cannot talk about. Mm-hmm. That's right. 228 area code, let's go. Many are called, few are chosen, are we grateful? 
Definitely, I'm grateful. Shalom, Elder Ricard and, and, and Elder Lawyer. This is Sister Shanice from Mississippi. How y'all doing this evening? And happy Feast of Tabernacles. Bless Shalom. you. Shalom. 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 Um, I have a question. I am definitely very, very, very grateful to the Most High um, for choosing me, you know, since the foundations of this, of, of this earth. And uh, my husband is newly in the truth, and I thank the Most High that, you know, he utilized, you know, me and the Holy Spirit to bring that truth to my husband as well. But um, <clears throat> I've been seeing a lot of chatter on Facebook. I have a question. Um, it's been a lot of talk about, uh, it's a, a whole bunch of different, you know, I don't want to bring up different camps and stuff like that, but I see a lot of talk of men that saying that a woman is supposed to bow to him naked on her knees. And a lot of, pe a lot of posts of people saying that it, you, this guy called me unrighteous because I was confused on if that's even righteous or not to bow to a man or to your husband. And stuff like that. And I, I'm just trying to be a good wife to my husband. And, you know, I'm definitely submissive to my husband. But as far as the bowing part, I need to know about that. Like, I'm confused. Hold on. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this back to you. What's your name, sister? What's your name? Shanice from Mississippi. Huh? Sister Shanice. Shanice? Shanice. All right. I don't know what, oh, okay, I need you to work with me real quick. I don't know what segment of Facebook or or what segment or what place or or what segment of Facebook you are actually conversing on or networking on. But, just friends. Okay, just friends. Let me check yeah, this. Yeah, it's just friends. Oh, okay. Like, okay, okay. Let, yeah, me, let, yeah. me, let, me, let me check this out real quick, and I need you to repeat this back to me. Okay. I'm, I'm going to put this out there. There's a woman with a husband. Right? You have a husband. Sir. Yes, and, sir. Okay. So, I'm going to introduce this. I'm going to... Okay. I'm going to introduce... You. Hey, 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 honey. Um, there's these guys on YouTube that's saying that uh, I need to bow to a man naked on my knees, uh, husband. Uh, what do you think about that? What do you think your husband going to say about that, about, about, about what you just received on Facebook? Um, well, he's sitting right here. I asked him about it. Okay, and, all right, okay. Put your, put your husband on the phone. he's sitting right That's here. Fine. Put your husband on the phone. Put, put him okay, on. okay, here you go. All right. All right. Shalom, Elder Ricard. This is Brother Caleb. Hey, brother. How you doing? I'm blessing you. I'm doing well. I'm. I'm. I'm sh uh, it seems to me you have a very secure relationship, right? Uh, did your wife come to you one day and just thought that she would say, uh, "Well, hubby, uh, what I'm hearing online is uh, that a woman must bow to a man naked on her knees." Did she relay that to you? Yes. Huh? She related to me. We what, talked about. What's she related to me, and we talked about it. What, what's your thoughts on that? I told her that I don't believe that's right because that's her bowing to me is like she's idolizing me or worshiping me, and that's wrong for me to even allow her to do that because I'm no one's God. Okay, all right, brother, I'm gonna help you out right here because there's a problem. And it's time you 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 correct this problem. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. It's like this, honey. I don't know what part of Facebook you're on, but any man can relate to you about bowing knees, on, naked, naked, in front of a man, even if he's talking about me. It's telling me that there's too much liberty there. OK, we have to do something about that Facebook That's right. because eventually it can be bowed to her husband naked on her knees. But that them words can be switched around where mm -hmm. you, you, you're excluded. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. 
as if she was bowing to someone else on her knees, like they turn no. it around no, and this, go another way. No, this is what I'm saying, brother. There's too much liberty there where any influence the man can have over your home to, 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 to the point where this is even a conversation. No, no, babe. I need, you know what? Uh, with a delete button on Facebook. There's too much liberty out there. No man should be talking about naked knees or nothing. To my woman, naked and knees don't sound right. Get it together, brother. All right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's time to reel it in. It's time, to reel, it's time to reel it in. Here's rules of engagement. That's right. Okay? Put rules of engagement. Something, something is going on there where there's too much liberality. Okay. I wish some. I would. Hey, honey. Yeah. By the way, uh, just, just. I just want to know. Is there any scriptures on me being butt naked on my knees and what? what? Right. So it ain't about no Israelite group. You're dealing with. There's a pervert on the other side. I don't care what his religion is. Exactly. Exactly. And you, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm not looking at Facebook. I'm looking at what's next to me. Naked knees, huh? Butt naked on knees. I'm like, listen, let's close this computer for a second. Now, give me that computer. The only knees going down is you hitting, you, 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 the only knees you go up in that bathroom and you pray into the Almighty. They go knees right there. That's right. Give me that computer. Give me that, give me that, give me your password. Guess what? You need a Facebook fast, okay? I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna place you on hold, and I hope yes, you've, uh, and brother, get it together, brother. It's time for you to put your your foot down. Any man that's conversing with your woman, he's sitting there, uh, cheese on the other side, naked knees, and she coming back. With, well, I don't know if that's right. Oh, you you don't do that with your man? Bow to a man naked? What's, what Bible is he reading? Lord have mercy. How, how do we get here? Exactly. Let, let me get to the next co phone call. Exactly. And that's oh the point. I don't know how some of these conversations uh. become conversations amongst people who are coming back to the Most High, seeking them in spirit and truth, seeking repentance. How do these, these things even become a conversation on any platform, let alone Facebook? There you go. Talk man, I front. bet you, I man, I'll put money. I bet you that there's a Facebook demon. Like, like, <laughs> like Zuckerberg has a cord or uh, some type of wire that goes directly into the, 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 the fifth floor of hell. And that's where the face, the, the Facebook God is sitting there just strapped. Oh, this obese demon mm, mm, mm. connecting to everyone and just causing confusion. Mm. More divorces, more more fornication, everything that happened since fa Facebook arrived. More people separating. Now I can see why. And that, I'm gonna show you the boldness of this. And sister, I'm just not the. I'm just using you as an example, not to attack you, sister. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna show you how deep it is. It's to a point where you can call on a public broadcast and ask an elder. Uh, I mean. When it comes to bowing to a man naked on his knees, this thing is this thing is just it's just I'm speechless, and I'm asking the brother, the brother, like, yeah, he he told me about it. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me, brother? You're gonna have to hey hey, you have to tighten things up, cause that that's a pervert. Mm -hmm. And the internet is filled with them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Let's go to the next call. Lord, have mercy. 340 area code. Lord, I think it's time to digress. We got about yes, a couple sir. of minutes. I'm going to sleep. Yes, sir. Hello? Oh, Hello? They, go, they go sunshine. Hello? They go sunshine. Hi, Lord, you, 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 came from out of the, you came from out of the rain? What's going on? Talk to me. Oh, elders, I, I am just so thankful to the Most High for His mercy for this truth. And one of the many ways I know that this seed that you're talking about gets watered in my family 
is through the power of the feast days and the holy days. People don't realize how wonderful these feasts are. It, they, coming off of the Day of Atonement and into Tabernacles, now I feel renewed in strength and closer in connection to the Most High. It, you know, His will be done. And these feast days help to guide me and my family in this time, in this very troubled time where people just stray away. They don't want the truth. They, they don't want the, the love of the truth. They actually hate the truth. But I feel guided and I know what to do, when to do, what to speak and when to speak. And I have ears. I can say, okay, you know what? I need to store grain. I need to store medicines. The shelves are going loose. I need to get things, the necessities, I, they're, they're, they're coming down on the schools. I need to take my kids out and homeschool them. I need to pre-order things because the, 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 the mail is going slow and so forth. All of this has gotten through these feet, and, and I need to study more with my family to show myself approved in the Word. And so it is true that people will hate you for loving Christ and even for proclaiming you love Christ. They will hate you and they will decide, okay, I'd rather a delusion, you know. But I'm holding on to the seed, Elder. I know the birth pains, I can feel it tightening, but I'm trudging through. I'm trying to, to raise my children the way the Most High said, that we need to raise them in morality and righteousness in the law to defend them so that they, as the third and fourth generation, can break this curse. And, and, and we need to just pick ourselves up. We fall seven times, but we need to get right back up again. Because like Elder Gasha was talking about earlier, trials and tribulations is how we are tried like gold in the fire. And I'm just so thankful for this treasure, this wonderful truth that the Most High has given me. And, and bottom line is, Elder, I appreciate the life. I appreciate the daily sacrifice, the shelter, the raiment, the obedience in order that the Most High said, the Most High Christ, man, woman, the children. This obedience is true happiness for me. And through this, I know my purpose as a woman. I'm learning it more and more each day, and I want to be perfect in it, to strive to be what the Most High made me to be, a virtuous woman in submission on the command of my husband, on the command of the Most High. And I'm just truly grateful and humbled by this wonderful, wonderful truth. Bless you, elders. Bless you. Bless you, sunshine. We're going to find out what That's that is. All, I have to say. <laughs> all right. Another so, thing, bless you, sister. Another thing for the sister that left off. Um, Amen. Oh, Shanice. His sister Shanice. Okay. Just so you get understanding, while I didn't, I didn't mean to offend you. I don't want you to think that it's abrasive, for whatever the case is. But we really need to focus and understand that we're at a time in which we have to cut certain activity off. Okay. Let me tell you, these people in some of these groups and what they're dealing with isn't right. And what you have to do is cut it off where there is no passage. It gets you to a degree in which you maybe you might believe a few things and want to question us about it. When in reality is when people be making these statements, a woman need to bow to a man. This, that, no, this, that. Let me tell you, they, let me tell you, folks. I'm going to tell you, sister. The, they're not right in the spirit. Let me put it that way. Let me, I'm, I'm trying to not, you know, focus on them like that. You have to understand people you need to stay away from and block mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Who's a distraction. You know, you're doing right by your man. You don't need no confirmation outside of scriptures on how you should be with your man. What, how, what, what's going on with you and your husband is between you and your husband. That's right. That's it. That's right. And if he's not complaining, you're fine. Mm -hmm. I wish some guy by some some guy would say, "Hey, hold up! You may think you're following your man, but if you are you bowing to him? Like what? These guys aren't satisfied unless they are abusing a woman. Okay, abusing a woman or doing what? Putting a woman beneath 
man. And that's showing a level of insecurity. Because if a man is following the Most High, you don't have to force a woman to be beneath you. She'll follow the, the spirit in you. Okay? She'll submit, not just to you, but what? To that strong spirit that comes with what? Humility. Love. Care. So if you got to force somebody to bend to your will, that's not a relationship. That's slavery. That's the stuff we come down on a white man for doing to our sisters in captivity. Now you're saying that as an Israelite woman, she have to be, you know, in order for her to be free to serve the God of Israel. That she must get abused by you. It doesn't make any sense. That submission isn't a forceful a, a abusive submission. And that's what we want to put, put out there. And I'm, I'm glad I came back to us to let you know that I wanted to highlight that because too many people out there, I wanted to use what you were saying, not for you, but as an example. We allow too much of our privacy to other people. We allow other people to dictate our household. That's mm -hmm. wrong. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't allow that. You should... You should build a barrier, a wall to what will never come into your home, mm -hmm. even if you're going to use that platform. Mm -hmm. That's right. So I'm using you, sister, as an example of, listen, you got to build boundaries. If you're going to be on those platforms, make sure you build a boundary. Where people know that if you're going to interact with me, you're going to treat me with respect. Mm -hmm. Or you're going to get blocked or whatever that is on there. When you come into my space, you're going to honor me as if you were standing before me. And no way you'll be standing in front of me and my husband saying that I'm supposed to bow down and be naked and all these things without without what? Without my husband actually selling you. So what we allow on these Facebooks and all this is it isn't right. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted you as an example. You have to start setting boundaries. She, you sister, you got to set boundaries and your husband have to set boundaries. Like if you're gonna be on there, these are the, you 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 want to have no different conversations than if you were in front of me. Uh, people are saying that it was a sister who actually shared. It was a woman that made the post. It was a woman that made the post. <laughs> it was a sister that told another sister. See, and not only that, this is what happens. With abused women. She's trying to justify that abuse by saying so that so that she can't so it don't seem like she's doing something out of the pocket. And she's trying to now convey that and make people believe that they have to be like she is in an abuse relationship. And that's even worse. She, the, 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 the deepest part is she's probably not doing that at all. Exactly. She's trying to seem like she's on some certain level. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, usually yeah. people are out there like yeah. that and saying these things. That's not the reality of what their situation is. No. They try to, Nine know. times out of ten, the person who posted that is a person without a husband. Exactly. Exactly. And let me mention this as well, Elder. Um, you hear a lot of stories of people, brothers and sisters, stating that um, my family don't want to hear this and this is breaking up my family and things of that nature or... Certain things are being brought forth that are, you know, my family just don't want to get it. And sometimes we think it's just because they are bringing to their family. I'm not talking about the sister in particular. I'm just speaking in general. We may think it's because they're just bringing their family the gospel. They're yeah. just bringing their family the teachings. But it's all these other things as well that people are introducing. They're bringing home. They watch a video. They go on a Facebook or social media posts and they see these things and they're trying to impose these things that they're seeing on these different sites on their family and their family is looking at them like they're crazy. Like, where are you getting this stuff from? So it's a, it's a word to the wise. You have to be careful of, number one, as you mentioned, setting boundaries. And also, you have to be careful and understand that when you try to bring these things to your family, your family are normal thinking people. They're sane people. They may not have the truth, yeah. but they know right from wrong. Yeah. And when you bring certain things to them from these different places, all these different sites, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. And they're not going to listen yeah. to you.
she and, was supposed to be yeah. married. She was supposed to be married. She was just. Well, well, listen. Which is even, even more weird. If she is married, whatever the case is, her husband should have had her under wrap. She shouldn't be out there posting what she do because this is she, what she's really bringing forth. This woman, I'm in correction, what she's doing is you cannot be putting out publicly what you do in your own bedroom, which in your own house. She's out of the pocket. Mm hmm. Exactly. So she's all loose like that. A, a man is supposed you, you, you sister and you brothers out there. You supposed to be ignoring people like that. Mm -hmm. Like like you out of the pocket, sister. Okay, your house is your house. That should be private. Exactly. It tell you a discretion. Uh, the discretion of a wife fattens her husband's bones. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be out there. So I wanted to correct that because I thought I heard her say other groups. And automatically, I thought that it, it was coming from a guy, which was really ridiculous. But the fact that a woman is out there saying that a woman is supposed to bow naked to a man. Sister, you out of pocket. Yeah, that's all from the self. The answer is all over, but it looked like some kind of couple thing or something. Like well, I don't know. There's segments of Facebook that yeah. people, that our people, the people that listen to another church, shouldn't frequent. Mm -hmm. Because people are tossed to and fro all over the place and being distracted. Because based on what's going on now, folks, you, you people have to get, they're well behind. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're well behind where the conversation should be right now. Exactly. You should have been dealt with that husband, wife, and all that. We, we're trying to bring it all out now just to get you together for the wilderness. Uh -huh. But all that time to get things together, they're well behind the eight ball. If that's, that's what you're right. talking about right now. That's right. With the mark of the beast. Instituted with them about to shut down food and food banks being commandeered with the military being, you know, deployed in certain areas. Now, what are you going to talk about uh, uh, naked with the husband and, and all this crap? Listen, it's time to focus. Let's read it, Elder Lawyer. <laughs> Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 14. <laughs> that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. Exactly, because guess what? Only silly girls will be online talking about how she bowed to her husband. That's a silly girl. That, that, that That's a silly girl talking. No woman with any honor in class would put herself out there like that. Mm -hmm. That's silly girl conversation. You're getting tossed to and fro in different winds of doctrine. Whatever fetishes her husband have for her to do, that's between them two. That shouldn't be online. Mm -hmm. Read. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. They lie and wait to deceive. And you know what? It, 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 and this is why we, we, we teach and we be bringing forth the law and the understanding and codes when it comes to the requirements of a man and woman. Therefore, at any time with the wisdom, when people make posts like that, y'all can come back with, hold up. A wife's discretion fattens a husband's bones. You should be talking about sex or, or what you would do with your husband. That's your business. What is that online for? Mm hmm. Sisters like that need to be corrected. There's no authority she's, she's wielding. She's mm -hmm. silly. Right. Okay. Let's go. Let's go to next. What she's trying to do is make you believe, make other women believe she's more submissive and holier and more virtuous than other women. She's mm -hmm. silly. Mm -hmm. A real woman of class don't put herself out there like that. Uh, let's get to the next. You got, a, you got something else, other way? Yes, sir. You can get the... Uh, All right, let's call. get to the next call. 917. Yes, uh, we need, good, we need uh, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, I think I, I'm going to have to deal with a uh, Gabar on this side of town to get down with the, uh, baptism but uh, you uh, mentioned some something that that sparked the question. Uh, you said during your uh, the the tabernacle, I guess uh, someone gave you a gift with books, 
and uh, concerning the DNA, uh, it, it, it popped, it raised the question that, uh, just wondering, like, when someone dies, does it matter what one does with the flesh? Like, you know, some people, they get cremated. Some people uh, donate organs. I'm just curious to, like, what does the Bible have to say about that? Like, does it matter? All in the Bible, you're supposed to give your family an honorable burial. When you hear of the forefathers and their wives, Abraham, Sarah, it was all about doing what? Purchasing a plot in which you can bury the bones or to preserve the body alive for the day of resurrection. You're not supposed to donate your organs. You're not supposed to. And a lot of times uh, these uh, funeral homes will claim that they have actually cremated a body and just given you a, a whole urn of ashes. There was a place in Philadelphia where they was given ashes. Come to find out there was dog ashes in there because because a lot of these funeral homes make more money donating the body to science. So they'll have the funeral, have the family leave. A few days later, they, 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 they'll give you an urn of ashes, and now your body is donated to science. It all links into what happened during that battle for the body. I'm going to be going into that. But yes, all through the Bible, it was talking about an honorable marriage. You're not supposed to cremate. Cremation is a sacrifice to the gods. We came from the dust. We, okay. we came from the dust. We came from the earth. We're supposed to go back to the earth. That's an honorable burial so that the Most High can preserve us in the ground until the day of resurrection. All right. Okay. And uh, did, did, thanks. Thanks for that. And just one more question. You also touched up on the uh, Joseph being the actual father. I, I mean, you know, me not being knowledgeable as 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 much, but um. So are are you saying that uh like Joseph and Mary got together, did what they did, and and uh, <laughs> and Christ was, was born out of that, or, or are you saying something else? Like he fathered the child. Okay, you have a Bible. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, uh, actually, the the one uh, you know from watching you guys for like no, about no, no. that's a, a question. Year and a half, two see, years and see half. when I ask a question, the yes, answer yes, is yes, yes or no. Do you have a Bible? Yes. Okay. Go to Matthew, the first chapter. Well, sir, I mean it's not here with me right now. Okay. Um, well, brother. I can't a answer a biblical question without you having a Bible. Well, I could always refer back, you know. Um, okay, so you say Matthew? Matthew, the first chapter. <laughs> and the reason why you must have a Bible, oh, oh, oh. the reason why you must have, because I don't want people to claim this is what I'm saying. You have to see it with your own eyes. So when you look at your Bible, you'll know that Rakosh Yar didn't publish your Bible. See, people can easily, they want me to talk so that they can say, this is what the Gathering of Christ Church is claiming. This is what, and therefore, you can separate yourself, by, you can separate your thoughts and what you believe it is and continue with that by claiming, well, okay, that's just their opinion. That's their philosophy on the Bible. But if you read it yourself, when this broadcast ends, you have to live with what you see. Yeah. Okay. Yes, which is why, which is why uh, October 11th, you know, I, I do plan on joining so I could get a, you know, a better understanding. Like the, 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 what is it, the 1911 version? You know, it's, it's a little difficult. <laughs> hey, brother, to, I'm just asking you, do you have a Bible? Hey, brother, listen to me. I'm just simple. Do you have a Bible? All right. I mean, so you made your point. Out. No, no, no. I'm asking you. Brother, brother, no, no. I'm, I'm at, brother, I'm asking you. If not, do you have a phone with 
Do you have a phone with the internet in which you could pull up a Bible? Yeah. King James Version? Yeah, but, yeah, but, no, because it's like I'm basically just laying down listening to you guys, you know what I'm saying? So it's not like I'm going to be like, oh, you know, Rakash Yar said this, blah, blah, blah. I mean, this is being recorded. I could always go back tomorrow. 90 next day seconds. When, when I have my Bible so I could see, okay, he said refer to Matthew. And, you know, then I could go through it. You know what I'm saying? So it's not like, uh, you know, I'm just taking no, your word and brother. not going no, to go you, back and, and do research. Well, this brother, listen to what I'm saying, though. I understand what you're saying, but I'm required to show it to you. That's that's what my requirement is as a teacher. Yeah. My, my requirement, I can't do it. 60 seconds. You know, I can't do it and teach you. The way you are suggesting, I have to teach you with the way I know is effective, according to the word, how God, how the most High have guided me to teach. And I can't teach you without a book open. And th because why? It tells us in Romans, uh, 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 the third chapter, it tells us for what if some did not believe shall the faith of God, uh, uh, make the, sh shall the, Shall it make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. So it, it, then it goes into what? The oracles of God. It breaks down that everyone has to believe according to the oracles. The oracles is the book. When you read it, the book is life. And that's what teaches Second. you. Okay. I can only direct you. I'm not going to give you an overview so you can go back later. As I'm teaching you, because as you're reading it, I want to make sure you're understanding it according to its context. And therefore, if there's any pushback or any questions, you can ha get your answers real time. That's how you teach. You got it. Got, got it. Sir. But but and if just, you're gonna okay, but listen, thing, but, but listen, but if you're gonna be in the academy, yeah. if you're gonna be in the academy, that's fine because you're gonna get it anyway. Okay. Uh, so you, uh, so I, I'm just saying so the the the, the 1911 version that, that English is you know what well, besides the 1911 you say the 1611 other, the 1611 like, yeah yes I'm sorry 1611 uh besides that one what other version would you recommend that's more modern and more easily uh you know opposed to to the 1611 uh, the King James Version Bible. It's a regular KJV. A regular, the regular King James a regular Version KJV, Bible. yes. Not an NIV. The NIV, okay. Okay. the NIV, and all these other books are the books of the devil. KJV. So I'll King James. All right, all right. All right. Thank you. Uh, are you going to be in the academy? For sure, for sure. Because um, you know. Okay. Uh, I'm. I'm. I mean. I'm. I'm. I'm interested. You know. So. All right. Oh. Well, let me read one scripture to you. All, all right. right. All right. Real quick. Now the breakdown of Matthew. I'll do that because in the synodic it make it clear. Even the angel says who Joseph is, and that was before. The Matthews we have in the King James Version, which was a later date. Uh, Elder Lawyer, I need you to read this for me real quick. Luke 4 and 22. Let's read that. St. Luke chapter 4, verse number 22. And all bear witness or bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said... Is not this the is not this Joseph's son? Is not this what? Is not this Joseph's son? So during Christ's time, the people knew that Joseph, that Christ was who, according to the Bible. This is one. I'm asking you, brother. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Joseph's son. Now, what the Catholic Church tried to make people believe that it was his adopted son. See, see, and they, so, so, so listen, what I'm saying, so listen, no, so listen, they focus so much on Mary. You didn't even know that the Bible said that Christ, that Christ was Joseph's son. Did you? Have you ever read that scripture? 
Uh, no, no, I haven't. But but from what I'm saying, they they, they uh, is basically saying she, Mary had the Im- immaculate conception. Okay. But you're saying what Joseph? But but you're saying Joseph and Mary got together and I'm, and I'm not listen, sister, uh, brother, Christ. brother. I'm not saying nothing. I just I just quoted a scripture where it says Christ okay. is Joseph's yes. son. Okay. See, see how you keep on saying what you're okay. saying? Because, yeah, yeah, I see. <laughs> and, and, and this is why I have to correct you. Because you mentioned Immaculate Conception. And I've never read the word Immaculate Conception in any Bible. As a matter of fact, the Immaculate Conception is a new philosophy that just come up not a few hundred years ago. There was no such word in philosophy with the disciples as in Immaculate Conception. That's a concept that came with the Roman Empire. Because they were dealing with they were dealing with an immaculate conception. Okay? They were dealing with immaculate conception before Christ yeah. was born in the Roman Empire. Myth- Mithras. They were dealing with the religion of Mithras amongst Romans. So I'm yeah, not listen, okay. so so yeah, you'll ne- so listen, so you'll never hear me talk about immaculate conception because it was the Jesuits, it was the Romans who came up with that. I have nothing to do with that. I'm a Bible man. So only thing you yeah. have to do is get your Bible and type in Joseph and see how all the scriptures go into Joseph and his part. Instead of you just leaning towards the immaculate conception, which is a philosophy that came from the demonic Romans. OK, that's number one. Number two. OK. Romans one and three real quick. Elder lawyer. So this is not what I'm saying. Romans 1 and 3, read it. Romans 1, verse 3. Concerning his son, Yeshua the anointed, our Lord, or I'll say as it is, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now, he was made of what? Which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Now, this is not what Elder Rikashiar is saying or the gathering of Christ's church is saying. Right? What's your name, brother? Yeah. Uh, Will. Okay, Will. All right. Concerning the son, Yeshua, Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David. Now, seed, brother, in the Greek is 4690. And guess what it says here for seed, where Christ was made of the seed of David. It says a seed, and the word is sperma, S-P-E-R-M-A, sperma, offspring, seed. (laughs) Because a nation is dictated or confirmed through a man's seed. If Christ didn't have a father, he don't have a nation. So the Bible says sperm. Yeah, he so I need you to tell me how this was produced. How was this sperm that the Bible says Christ came of was produced? But yeah, the, so the Bible clearly stated that, uh, you know, so it, there's no such thing as a e- immaculate conception. I mean, we, uh, hold, hold up, hold up, slow up, that, slow up, uh, slow up. You keep on saying there's no such thing as an immaculate conception. I never read no Macklin conception in the Bible. I don't know what that is. That's foolishness. There is no Macklin conception. That's a philosophy. Colossians 2 and 8 says, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy in vain deceit. Now you have to realize Christ was the son of the almighty before man was made. So he was the first begotten of the father in creation. So it doesn't take away from who Christ is because the spirit that came from the father that was made in the beginning was the spirit that came that that was sent into Mary's womb. That's the spirit. He's still the son of God because that spirit is the first begotten of the father. But in order for him to take away the sin of Adam, he had to come through sinful flesh. He had to come through that same seed that was produced through sin that came through Adam. So according to the spirit, He's the son of the Almighty. According to the flesh, 
He came through the seed of Adam to destroy that sin that came through Adam. He's still the son of God. We're just tearing down the lies and, and, kip, and kicking Ceramuses and Nimrod and Tammuz legends that the Romans have injected out of here. So Immaculate Conception, I don't know what that is. I'm, I'm still reading the Bible. I'm still waiting to, to find that in the Bible. There's no such concept. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so looking forward to uh, October 11th. <laughs> Hebrew and Bible, okay. hey, brother, we, guess what? In the We have a book that states it. And straight up. And it predates the book of Matthew. We're going to blow this away. They use two verses in the Bible to deceive the world and have them go back to worship in Simramis's. The queen mother of heaven, Nimrod's mother, through a new concept called Immaculate Conception. And we're going we're gonna to break it down. Don't worry about it. Shalom. Happy tabernacle. Now, now you see sperma, right? Seed of. Now, now you're going to have to let us know how. As they claim, God and Mary produce sperm. It's in the Bible. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I'm just saying this is what I was told. Um, and this is, you know, like you said, it's been around for hundreds of years. So I'm sure a lot of people are, uh, you know. Deceived. Um, Delusion. I, I'm sure a lot of people, you know, are aware of this. But they don't, you know, they don't know where to find it in the Bible or they don't, you know, you know, it's just something that was told to them. They never went out to seek for themselves to see if this is, if, if this is so, so, you know, um, but thanks to, 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 to you guys that, uh, you know, yeah. you're able to clear that up for me. Yeah. Well, all praise be to the almighty. And people, and we, don't, don't let them go into, don't, don't let the people talk about, they question Christ's divinity and all that. Show me divinity in the Bible. These are demons that's talking about divinity and all that. Christ, Christ, Christ's, Christ's power began before earth. So don't let them go into, it was the Romans arguing divinity so they could sleep, slip in their, their, their Mary, their, their Simramuses. But rename her and relabel her as Mary. And Talmuz. And, and, and Talmuz and Nimrod and rebrand them as Christ. Guess what? This, this, this virgin thing started way before the Romans. It started in Babylon. We fell to that ideology and began to erect trees to that, to that same ideology a half a century before Christ was born. So we're breaking... We're, we're breaking all the spells Satan has on our people. Okay? Shalom, we welcome you to I'm the saying. academy. And, you, and you're going to have the records and the references Thanks. to be able to stand behind your, your ideology. Just using the Bible going forward. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs> I only can, I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was so late. I have to take one more call. You have something you're up? Uh, somebody said there, King James says he, uh, that it says he was born of a virgin. I never saw that one. Where did that come from? King James said he was born of a virgin. No, nah, they, they, they were just saying it was an egg. King James that said that, that, she was, that they were born of a virgin. Yeah, but but, 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 what, but what virgin? What? Give me an example of a virgin because... There's more than one definition biblically, biblically of a virgin. There's a virgin who haven't been touched by man. And there's women who have been touched by men of marriageable age. There's women that are married and have had sex with men in the Old Testament that are called virgins. So what virgin are you talking about? When you read Deuteronomy 22, there's a scenario where a man is married to a woman, don't want to know more, Right? He found some level of hatred in her in which he's trying to put her away. And she's called a maiden or vir she's called a virgin during that scenario. And she's already married with the token of virginity. And in the chapter, a woman who had sex with her husband is being called a virgin. 
So you've been deceived, that's all. Under Esau's definition here, they would make you believe that virgin means a person who have never had sexual intercourse. When there's more definitions, there's more ways to define virgin in the Old Testament. We're Hebrews, we're not Romans. So we're not dealing with the Romans definition of virgin so they can bring forth their, you know, their fantasies, their delusions, their deceptions. There's virgins in the Old Testament who've actually did what? Lay down with man and was called virgins after that. Even when you look at the prophecy in Isaiah. Guess what? The prophecy was fulfilled in Christ. But there was a prophecy back then in which a child would be born. And guess how that child was born? Through a man and a woman. And it was, his name was Emmanuel. So, get in the academy. Can't give everything away here. We don't have all night. We have one more call and then we'll wish you all Godspeed. One more call. Did you still need to uh, play the or give the information for the album? Oh, yeah. Before I do that. Let me give the information for Bishop Amoff's album, Thawada. I have it here. Yeah, and guess what? It's, it's amazing. I, I'm sorry, Amoff. Things got loose, but I, I, I'm glad Elder... Lawyer reminded me. Bishop Amoff's album, The Holy Empire, Bandcamp.com. I need y'all to click on that. And I, I'm going to play a sample. Energy, a new album from, the, from a bishop of the Gathering of Christ Church, Philadelphia, Amoff. Man, he's bringing it. Send a prayer 
And that's right. We're going to have our own broadcasts, bringing forth our own music. That's right. And we, we have our own radio. Our own app where people can come in morning, noon, and we'll give news and all. We'll give certain information mm. in between. Mm. Some of it be pre recorded, but you will hear our music and be able to get it. That's another discussion we're having. Mm. And I'm going to tell you this right now this is why the devil is upset. Mm. Because for the first time, we're making our own product, praising the Most High, without the vultures having an opportunity to steal it, mm -hmm. to take our music, to, to squeeze all the, all, every ounce out of us, take the royalty so that their children can have a better life. Mm -hmm. And this is why they're upset, because now we are like, no, nah, we don't have to sign a deal with you. OK, we don't have to sign a deal with you. We may not get because we're not going to get the millions anyway, because everything right. you give us <laughs> in an advancement have it where we become indebted to you. Mm -hmm. OK, I'd rather make less money and sell my own units and know that my children will have something afterwards than allow you vultures to put my music on your machine to actually do what grandize yourself. And give your children and your grandchildren generational wealth. Okay. And usually when you have a platform with a lot of people looking at it or listening to it, there's payola where you have to pay a radio station or a company to actually play it. Guess what? A moth did that music. And even though we have thousands of people looking, I didn't say, well, listen, in order for me to put you down, you're going to have to give me some scratch. Nah. You know what I did? This is what I did. This, this is being on code. This is supporting each other. I took the link and gave it there right to you. So whatever this brother get for his hard work, it goes for him and his family. Mm -hmm. And if he's and of course, the law says he'll give 10 percent towards the work. So it, it all comes back full circle where the finances are circulating amongst us instead of us giving the money to the demons who are actually using the money to do what? Weaponize. Society against us. So, you know what I mean? So, this is what I'm saying. So this is this is what it talks about when it talks about helping our nation and circulating amongst each other. It takes a lot of money to make this these music, this music. And, then, and here it is. You got to knock on their door, get these 360 deals so that they can so that they, they can just spiritually rape you and take everything from you and leave you out there with nothing. No more. So this is what it's about. The most I gave us a position where there's a large audience. We got about a few thousand up in here. Guess what? We didn't say, listen, brother, in order for us to play your song, you know what I mean? We're going to need a cut. You got to give me some money. No, no there it is. Mm -hmm. Right there. He can take care of his family. If something happens where he's blessed and the most High give him something, hey, a just wait for a just measure. He put his work in it. Guess what? The money should be his. That's the way it's supposed to be. No more getting getting taken advantage of by these culture vultures. 763, last call. You've been waiting a while. Shalom. Shalom. You've had the honor. I apologize for everyone else yeah. who stayed on hold. Don't worry about it. The next time we do a broadcast, I'm just going to open it up. We're going to go straight to the call so that it don't worry about it. If I didn't get your call tonight, don't worry about it. Just call back. I'll make sure I take a snapshot of what I'm seeing here and we'll make sure we'll get to your calls first. The next time we open up the lines. OK. All right. You're the last call for the night, sister. Talk to us. Yes. How you doing, Elder, the uh, Elder Lawyer? Uh, we're doing fine. Mm -hmm. Thanks for asking. Uh, uh, Elbeck, this is uh, Sister Tracy's uh, uh, Tony's wife. Well, Sister, Sister, do me a favor. Turn us, turn us down on the background. Make sure we're not on the back in your background. I hear myself. Okay, I'm trying. Okay. Okay, because I'm not even uh, hearing you talking, so I guess that's why it's so awkward for me. Well, there's a delay, but if I can hear myself, that means I must be on a speaker or something there. 
you know what? I have my headset on because I didn't want to echo, so should I take it off? No, just just say what you have to say. I just won't speak until after you're done. Okay. Well, Elder, I just wanted to get on here and uh, just thank you and Elder Lawyer. Uh, and I've been wanting to get on here and say something because you all have been truly a blessing to my family. And uh, I just sometimes get nervous and my words don't come out right. Okay. But I had to... Uh, share this with you guys. Uh, my uh, husband, you know, uh, had diabetes. And Elvis, you told him to come off of this medicine. And I'm telling this again because I've been sharing it with everybody else uh, about his diabetes and stuff. Where his diabetes was so bad that his legs, he's still dealing with his legs, but it has come down so much. But he came off of that uh, insulin you just told him to come off of it. And we were really scared, like the whole family. And my one daughter that's like a nurse, she got scared because before he uh, came off uh, uh, the insulin and stuff, his sugars went up to a 1,000, and we had to rush him to the emergency. He lost his eyesight and everything. But this last time, uh, you told him just come off of it. He's going to have to do it anyway and have faith. And so he did what you told him to do. And when I say, say everything regulated, like I can't even say the week, like within the day or two that you told him to do this, we were looking for him, you know, uh, whatever he ate, we were looking for it to spike up and his sugar at least to be like close to, you know, 500. But his sugars never went over 200. And the sugar is still, like, down, you know, low. And so, you know, I'm just grateful. I know what you all have been since uh, we've been up under the ministry. You know, I know we don't ask a lot of questions because we came in this knowing that we had been tricked, fooled, deceived, and everything. So we know we knew we had to come in as babies, put our ideas and our theories down, and we sat back and learned from you, and been taught from you. And when I say we just been eating it up because we have gained so much wisdom and knowledge, you know, through you guys. And I know money cannot pay for this. And no, uh, we, you know, we would never have the funds to give you from what we have been taught in this ministry. And I'm not just here saying some things. I mean this from my heart. I know what we have before us. You have truly uh, been a blessing in my family's life with the teaching and the knowledge and the wisdom that you have given us. You know, uh, I know there could have, Tony probably could have been one of the victims dead now. I could have because we didn't know the trickery within the system. You know, and Elder, I am going on, but I can't even hear you if you're trying to respond back to me. Uh, but I'm just, you know, uh, so grateful, you know, with you guys and thankful. And I have to say, every time we needed to get in contact with you, you know, I don't know about others, but you all have always returned our call, you know, when we needed you. And it was really desperate times when we needed you. And the most I have always made a way for you to get back with us. And I'm not going to keep you. Just want to let you know that, you know, we're here for you. We're grateful, you know. And even if you ever make it to Minnesota, you know, and not that we have a big place, but you are always welcome to stay here. You're an elder lawyer. Aww. You know, I, we, my family, we... We truly love you guys. And okay, sister, you sister, that's a lot to unpack, but real quick, just just to uh, pinpoint the uh, uh, the diabetes thing. And what what, what was what was okay. actually, what was actually told to this sister is that keep in mind that, um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna place you on hold because there's a lot of feedback there. 
Yeah. What was actually told to the sister that the majority of of the the diseases they put in our community, they, they first had to break us down psychologically into making us believe that we had a disease. Okay. There's no such thing as diabetes as a disease. Diabetes is nothing more than a vitamin deficiency. It's not a disease. Disease is something where if lawyer has it and I'm sitting next to him, I can catch it. So the playing on words is to make people believe I came down with something and now I got to take insulin for it. No. That's a psyop. That's a psyop. Your body produces its own insulin. But if the doctors can get you on the insulin, then what happens? It tricks your brain into believing that you're getting enough so that your body can no longer produce insulin. And now you become dependent forever on the pharmaceutical companies. That's been some, one of the greatest cons to keep you sl solely dependent on the healthcare system so that they can get money out of you through surgeries and all that. And then, then eventually kill you off, and you can add to the depopulation numbers. It's all eugenics. By, but first making you believe you have a disease. Through the fear, they get you on the insulin, and the insulin begins to do what? Dry up your veins and all that where blood cannot circulate correctly through your body. So you're thinking that when your feet are tingling and all that, that it's diabetes because a psych job was done on you. But it's not diabetes. It's the synthetic insulin that's drying up your veins where your blood cannot circulate, where now you get your feet cut off, your leg cut off. And who's making money? The devil. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking it's diabetes. But you've become dependent on the insulin, which is really killing you, putting you down slowly. And a lot of the doctors knows, know this. But no diagnosis, no money. So we prayed over the family and say, well, listen, you have to overcome this because before there was all these pharmaceuticals, the most high had herbs and good food and good eating and exercising and all those things to keep us healthy. So the first time she said she went off of it, things spiked because initially, if you stop the regimen, your body has a reaction to it immediately. So that's the body saying, I don't understand this. But then she trusted in the Most High because they was talking about cutting things off and all that. And they trusted in the Most High. We prayed. They began to eat together. They began to exercise. And guess what? He's saving his limbs. His body began to regulate because without the medicine, your body begins to operate again and bring forth its natural insulin. And it fixes itself. And now they're celebrating the fact that he don't have to deal with these medications anymore. He's overcome the curse of the psyop that was leading him to his own demise. And I hear, I hear many stories like this. Where even the disciples, they began to do what? They began to pray and heal people. The first healing starts here. Stop allowing them to, to, to make you believe something is wrong with you. OK, they're in the business of sickness. And you go through all these things and do everything they say, and then eventually you die anyway, or you die an early death anyway. What good was it? You're dead. You have to believe and understand this. That and guess what? There is a lot of good in modern medicine. There's a lot of good in it, okay? But you have to understand hospitals and all that are good for acute things, mm -hmm. emergency things. Mm -hmm. So we're not saying that it's all evil, but you have to understand when it's a psyop and a psych job and a part of eugenics and, and used to put you down. Have you depended all your life on medication to where now they can up their numbers through cutting you up like an animal? Hacking off your limbs and all that. And that's no quality of life anyway. Mm -hmm. What quality of life that is where you're running around with all these patches on you. Your legs are cut. You can't even walk. That's no quality of life. It's okay when it's time for you to go. When the most are calling you home. It's okay to go home whole. 
It's okay. But you know what? I'm so glad. It's, it's, it feels so good because I hear these conversations all the time. It, it's, it feels so good to get, to, to get good news. We're brothers and sisters called in appreciation for what the ministry have helped. I mean, I've had many people come and say, oh, man, I don't know where my life would be if I didn't run into your lessons. And guess what? I'm a vessel. That's all it's about. It's that seed that was planted. And I continued with that seed to plant that seed to help brothers and sisters. And brothers and sisters, that's what it really comes down to. You show me your faith. We'll show you our faith by our works. <laughs> and that's all I can say. And we're going to take this seed that the Most High have given us and continue on with it. And I just hope that you continue with us. Remember, I said it before. Many are called. Put this in there, Elder Lawyer. Yes, sir. Many are called. But few are chosen. Who's called? Here it is. The East is where we're from. Twelve tribes of Israel In 721 B.C. The Assyrian king He took us down, we fell With the great escape we went To the Euphrates The Lord held the water still to a land where no mankind dwelt, we went. The twelve tribes of Israel. That's who we be, we be. Manasseh, the Cubans, Ephraim, from Puerto Rico, and Bali from the Isles of Hawaii. The Lord is calling back Israel. Zebulon, from Panama, Gat, the North American Indians, Samia, the Dominicans. Is gathering Israel. The Arabs and Africans told us. At good point. Together our wives and children then sold us. In the belly of these great ships we traveled in fear. By the rivers of Babylon we found our brothers here. A high gatherer. Asher in Colombia. Oh. Reuben from Australia. The Mexicans uh -huh. From the Barbara Islands The Negroes Benjamin the West Indians Levi The Haitians Gathering is by air. 